Shmoville. Well, it's been a little bit uh, since the last upload on this channel. It, it, and there's a good reason for it. Besides the fact that it's just been a busy week, I think it actually worked out pretty well that episode 61 is presented in such a... Uh, you have to wait for it. Episode 61, yeah, as I'm even thinking about this show and as I was uploading it or putting it on the, uh, the channel here, it really did a lot for the show and, and presented us in a way that the show was really, really starting to become le like legit. Look at this lineup. Now, if you watched the last episode, I had mentioned to you guys that we had, were at Toad Hop. We were at Universal Studios for a long time. Toad Hop had left Universal Studios. We stayed there at Universal Studios for one show. So now let's go back to Toad Hop. And this is it. We went over, not, not only did we go back over to Toad Hop, the show was still a morning show. And then it went from now, it was the, this was the first show that we ever did that was two hours. The show now is two hours long. This was the first show that was ever two hours long. It went from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. And what a, what a lineup to start us with our first morning two-hour show. We had our new co-host, Katie Sackoff, was in the chair, ready to go, and we brought on our buddy Jeremy Johns, who was he was in uh, he was in town that week, and he came, he finally got to meet Katie. Sat down, and not only did we let him meet Katie for the first time, he got to meet Rudy himself, Samwise Ganji, Sean Astin. This is his first appearance. Sean has been on the show around three times, and this was his first appearance on the show. And we talked everything that you would want to talk to Sean Astin about. We talked to him about Goonies and Rudy and Lord of the Rings. We talked about all that stuff, and it's, we had him for like the first hour. And then it was just a fun discussion. We all talked movies, and I think I, at one point I asked Jeremy like what his least favorite movie was of the summer at that point. This was August of uh, 2012, the end of August. The other thing is that there's a classic moment in this episode that if you've been listening to the show for a long time, then you'll remember this moment. If you're not, if you're brand new to it, it was one that stuck with us for a very long time. This was the infamous classless whore bit. Uh, Katie had gotten a, um, a text from some, uh, a text, a, t a tweet from somebody who called her a classless whore. And, you know, we made fun of it. We had a joke with it. And Ken Nabsock, who was not the producer yet, what did he do? Well, he made, in, in, it was preceding this episode, but he made a, a picture of himself with a, with a bottle of perfume that said classless whore. But we, we had a joke on it. And if you remember the classless whore bit, it's in there. It's a great show. And the other thing that you're going to have to deal with for the next, uh, for the rest of the time on this channel I'm keeping the ads that Toad Hop and everything had in there. I was, I've been cutting them out of the other show. It was easier to do at an hour. I can't do it for the two hours. It's, just, it's a lot of time. So when you hit the ads, just fast forward past the ads in the, uh, for the, and, and just get, get back to where it was. So sorry, you got to deal with that. But come on, can you really be upset? You got Sean Astin, Katie Sackhoff, Jeremy Johns, and the Schmoes all talking movies. Enjoy, guys. Episode 61 of the Schmoes No Movie Show. How about that? Oh, what is going on? There's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, Schmoville, we are back. We're back in the Toad Hop Network, and a lot of stuff is going on today. What's up, pal? Uh, hey, Christian. Uh, this is Mark. And if you thought it was a magic trick, me getting up at 9 a.m. every week, <laughs> right. it is 8 a.m. I may as well be a farmer at this point. Well, you, you get used to it, pal. And we have a lot of cool stuff today because, um, yeah, we have an 8 to 10 show. That is the new announcement for you guys at Schmoville. We're back on Toad Hop. We have a brand new co-host. She's sitting beside me. Katie. Katie Sackoff, how are you? I'm yeah. good. I'm sitting beside you, on top of you. I know. Sitting on top you of guys me. are getting awful snuggly over there. Well, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So moving on. Uh, so I'm over here all by my lonesome, just watching you guys have fun. Yeah, and then we are we are joined. Uh, we, we're very very happy to have our guest with us today. Uh, we are all big fans of his. We met him at Comic Con. He actually, we're honored because he asked us to be on the show, and we're so happy to have him. Please give a nice Schmoville welcome to Mr. Sean Aston. How are you, Sean? Good, good. Good morning. Good morning to you. Exactly. Every, everybody's like, oh, yeah. oh. Except me, who's like eight cups of coffee in and mm -hmm. wired. I'm like, I was like, te I'm texting her saying, uh, oh, you know, if you want to do the first, half, she's like, I'll be there, bitches. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Sackoff was here before anybody. Third Sackoff was here last night. Else. Yeah. Well, that's what you do in your class. Katie talks all the time, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the Katie Sackoff show. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, no, she's just bitches all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's everybody. 
Hi, Mom. Um, are we going to Thanksgiving, bitches? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have to. It's the way we uh, show love in my family. It's the truth. Like um, it. So here's how it's going to break down for the first uh, 40 minutes of the show. And yes, so all you guys are wondering, where's Jeremy Johns? He will be here very soon. Uh, we'll intro him. Um, yeah, he's good. It's his where own is he? he? He'll be back in a second. He's uh, he's, he's, he's doing a little run. We sent him to go get coffee. Come on. Oh, 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 to go get coffee. We needed an intern for the show. He was being nice. He was being nice and said, get it. Come on. All right. So, all right. So we got Sean here. We're going to talk about... He's um, pressed into service. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, let's get into this stuff. Good for as you go. Now, Sean um, has been in some of probably the, our, some of our favorite movies of all time. And we were even actually had a uh, breakfast with a friend of mine. We were talking about The Goonies, of course. And that's we have to talk about that. It's the first one. And I really wanted to know from you, because I know, obviously, you come from a background of, uh, of, of the business and everything, too. But, like, how that... Perfect. <laughs> how that all kind of came about, like how, you know, if you remember how much you remember about getting cast and... I remember it all. You don't remember any of it No, 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 I have total recall. Do you really? Absolutely. So, like, how did that all go down? Like, well, you know, because, again, being, you were like, what, 12? 11? Uh, 12, yeah, I think it was 12. Wow. Yeah, I, it I, came out in 80, it, yeah, I think 12. So, I mean, so that whole that whole process then of, uh, you know, getting cast... It's funny, you were playing the Cindy Lauper song at the, kind of before the show, uh, Good, Goonies Are Good Enough, and I remember, I was looking at you, Katie, and I was just thinking, oh my, I was taking back to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Steven Spielberg sent all the Goonies as a combination rap gift slash practical joke on... Richard Donner, who uh -huh. kept saying for the entire show, I can't wait to get away from you, brat kids. Right. <laughs> you know, get to my house in Maui, get away from you, brat. You know, because you have seven screaming, everybody talking at the same time, kids, it gets a little much. And and uh, and we we went there, and it was all staged really beautifully. And he he was at, was taken out to the market to do shopping. And when he came back, the Goonies had like taken over his house. And then uh, the Fratellis <laughs> kind of came up from the from the the you know, even Mama Fratelli came up, and Ramsey came up from the thing. And and then they he said, well, l listen to this. Then he turned on the, the song, the Cindy Lauper song, and we were just all, it just all of a sudden was real. Like, oh my wow. God, this is like an actual movie with like a song, and people are going to hear it. And, you know, and we loved it. We walked around singing the song for three days in Maui. So, uh, it's actually like you took me. So, you're hearing that song again just yeah, brought it all it back. Brought, huh? brought it back a little bit. No, I remember, like, there, I know that they had the, uh, you, and then there was the, you guys did that commentary, I think, like 10 years ago or whatever, too. Oh, yeah. Well, you're going to give me an opportunity now to clip to. Did you watch it? Yeah, I watched some of it. I, I didn't get a chance to watch all of it, but I, want, I definitely want to talk to you. There's something that, that I think that About I, the commentary? What happened? What? Well, f of the one that I'm thinking about... Wait, wait, wait. He doesn't know. No, I'm, I'm totally in the dark. I'm what? in the no, dark, no, no. too. Th that question, what happened, yeah. I have to answer okay. in many settings over and over and will for the rest of my life. <laughs> what? Right. But you don't know what happened. Like, but, and neither you, you only watched half of it. I watched half of it. One Halfway of through the commentary, yeah. I disappear. Oh, okay. Did you pass Why? Out? What happened? So, all right, now yeah, you, I passed out. All right, now you got to answer. I, was, I had uh, I had some sort of an acid flashback <laughs> from the show, and I was like, boop, he's out. No, I... Uh, you I, hear Sean cracking open the Coors Lights in the first right. half, and then it's just, it's Z time. Oh, that's funny. No, we... Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I actually know one of the Coors guys, but uh, anyhow, the... I will see I had agreed, show. coincidentally, to go to a short film competition and introduce the host... The host being Joey, Joe Pantoliano, Joey Pants, oh, right. yeah. otherwise known as Guido the Killer Pimp. I don't know his name on Sopranos. Ralphie. Ralphie Sofredo. Yeah, okay. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Wow. Of, uh, yeah, we're going to brain on this guy. Yeah. I, I, I watched yeah. that show religiously. Yeah. So uh, he he was hosting this thing, and I agreed to do it. And then that was way before. I should have just uh, said, Joe, I love you, but this thing is going to last forever, and I can't answer questions in right. every set formal setting I go to about why I disappeared halfway through the the show, right. and like you know, and the, there was rumors. There was you know, oh, he was so mad, and but I, we had spent so much time talking, and it was so great to have this kind of reunion vibe among okay. all the Goonies and stuff. That we started a lot later than we planned to, and I just had this panic feeling, like I made a commitment to Joey Pants that I would be there. And yeah, so you don't I, want you don't want to piss off Joey Pants, right? Yeah, right, right. right. So well, exactly. so, so, so that's that's exactly, so that's why you left. So, that's why I left. Okay, but there was other something else that I read there, and I don't know, and you can you know whether or not this is true or not. Um, that uh, you had an idea for um, for a sequel. Oh yeah. And uh, so well, there's you know Steven has wanted Spielberg has wanted to do the sequel to Goonies from you know right after it came out and did so well. Right. Um, but he never had a script that he was happy with. And Dick Donner, I think, and he tried a few times to develop a script. They, they, um, 
it will happen. I will state categorically, and I have for years, that there will be a sequel to Goonies. Whether we're in it, the, like the original cast is in it or not. Who would, yeah, but that's the thing. I think there were rumored that there were going to be kid, uh, your kids. It would be pretty kid, cool to have like the adults from the original you want them. one mentor yeah, you want them. them. But let me tell you something. There I was always a thought g- the sequel was us as grownups. But, yeah. but they, what they clearly wanted was who? what's the next generation of Goonies. And now I have a 15-year-old daughter, almost 16-year-old daughter. Yeah. I think She's it'd be like, fantastic if you yeah. all had children and they had to wear helmets all the time. <laughs> They're just like... They die! You know? Like these kids, and they were such like crazy. They're like, don't forget your helmet, Tommy. Uh, well, you know, I thought you, you meant because they were, were like special needs kids. That's what I meant, yeah. yeah. Could oh. you get away with doing no. the truffle shuffle in, in this day and age with PC? Like, oh, well, that's bullying. We can't let them do the truffle shuffle. Like, there's so much fun in the original Goonies right. that, you, right. that you're almost not allowed to have now. Right. There was a Goonies 2. Did you guys know this? No. There was a Goonies 2 video game for Nintendo, yeah, and it was impossible that, right? to beat. Yeah. You literally got to a point in the game, and you just could not yeah. beat it. So I've always had a bone to pick. Yeah. You were yeah. Too it was you last week. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I was playing Duck Hunt. It was Duck on Hunt. the Commodore 64. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so there will be. Uh, I think they ought to do an anime. So they've they've commissioned several screenplays. Mm-hmm. I, I my idea for it. I had a good idea for it, and I wanted to go in and talk about it. But they they weren't. You know, there's. I think they had reasons for not wanting to hear my idea. What was the idea? Can you talk about it? I don't want to. Oh come on! I, I read about <laughs> what the rumor was. What was the rumor? Rumor was that you were like a marine biologist or something, and looking for one eye Willie's ship. And Ooh, almost, I like I like where this almost, is going. It's almost it's almost true. Almost true. And almost then true. okay, and then that's something like my, actually Stephen controls it. My my idea was that they uh, that Mikey hasn't given up on fine. Like he knows of another place, yeah. but he he knows that it's on the ship. That the trick of what you know the the clue that he needs is on the ship, and the ship's at the bottom of the ocean. So Brand is working as a uh, like some sort of a fisherman or something, and I you know he really is reluctant, doesn't want to do it, but I convince him to go out there, and there's like a dive down to the ship to go in there and look in the ship for the. The, yeah. the clue, and they get the clue, and I, there's whole. I have a whole thing. I'm signing up to see that. Yeah, everybody, everybody, everybody wants to see that movie right now. Um, yeah. Okay, guys, we're here with Sean Aston. Please, you know, you can tweet us at. Of course, it could be Mikey's son who does that. That's no, Mikey's keep it, daughter. Keep it, it to the be. keep it to the cast. Keep, you want to see the original cast come back? Look at the Avengers. Dick Donner wants to do a Broadway musical. He's he's talked very seriously about going to Broadway as a fun. I would love to hear that music. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what. All right, the twi- right? Twitter shirt's happy. That makes me so happy. Yeah. Oh my god! It's the best. Um, I used to have a T-shirt that said that said something along the lines of "Does anybody have ice cream?" Is that like, the one? No. Does, oh what, yeah. What did it say? Oh, well, his god. line. Well, his line what was Rocky his line? Road. Yeah, Rocky, Rocky Road. Road. It wasn't that. It was just like it was something. I don't. Chunk had all the different was, flavors. Yeah, and it was chunk chocolate holding, eruption and all of this right. stuff, and it was actually that's so funny. Yeah, because there were all those shirts that popped up. Sloth is like that iconic character. Also, like how like as a, as a twelve year old kid watching that like that makeup going in there every day. I mean, because that's got to be so easy to kind of get into the character when you see that guy. Because the makeup of that dude was incredible. Well, the. It's funny because they were at the cutting edge of a certain makeup technology. Mm-hmm. They actually had like you know a recessed eyeball and the ears that they could con- like with servos they could remote control. Oh, because his ears moved. His right? ears mm-hmm. moved. Yeah. yeah. So and it wasn't a finished technology. So there was a lot of like trial and error stuff that was happening. So we were very aware of like these you know state of the art, top of the line grade A special effects artist pushing the envelope and want, and like rooting for them. Right. So almost like you weren't in the uh, you weren't in it. You were watching you were like you were a fan watching it. And then John Matusak, the late great yeah. uh, Raiders linebacker, was he a linebacker? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh boy, I'm gonna get Twitter. I'm watching Twitter to see when I make a mistake. The but, twos. Um, he was, a number, he was the number he was the number one overall draft pick in like seventy two. Yeah. yeah, yeah he, and he, I watch a couple football games with him and you do not mess with the twos no. when he's watching football. You don't like walk <laughs> in between him and the television. You don't talk about something. Was he great. watching football in the in the getup? Uh yeah. Oh my God, I paid so much. Money it's to watch a live that. game. You can't TiVo it back then. You got to see what happens. I'm, no, I'm saying him, in the sloth makeup, oh, watching yeah. the game. That's I'm one saying. of the funniest things to me on a movie. I thought he said in the ghetto. No, it is. <laughs> was he watching in the ghetto? Yeah, was he, he watching was in, the ghetto, in the ghetto? In the ghetto. In the ghetto. Yeah, he, just, he literally. He was like, yeah. Imagine he's running around the ghetto with like the sloth makeup. They're just like, let that guy watch. It'd be weird though, like, yeah, guys. Fine. For some reason, Matuzak wants to go downtown to watch his football game in the middle of shooting. So, well, he we we watched the Super Bowl in together the Niners and whoever. Super Bowl mm-hmm. in '85. We went up to shoot in Bodega Bay. Niners, the, Dolphins, yeah, yeah. The, the 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 scene where we see the pirate ship. So we see the pirate ship during the day, and then like oh, the really? next day or whatever, we're watching it. And I actually bet fifty bucks on the Niners on the strength of, of a two's recommendation. I think I can't remember. It's still <laughs> long ago, but but yeah. So 
but he, he the point is that he was miserable in the you know he had such a good temperament he was really trying to be a good sport about it but it was miserable he had to get there at three in the morning yeah yeah you know finally be ready to make up sit around all day if the, for whatever reason the shot didn't you know require him or it was only needed once you know and he's there at the end of the day and they're like okay great. oh, oh. J Wom oh look at oh, that oh, oh so cool. Oh, yeah. Yay. We are yes. welcoming to the podcast Yay. our special friend, a very funny movie reviewer. You guys know him, you love him. Jeremy Johns, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. Who is? Oh, this is how, thank you for the appreciation. I got here and they were like, we need coffee. Uh, go get some. Yeah. I was like, oh, all right. Well, no, you I guess that's what I'm I doing. I was going to get you, but they gave me this look like you will not leave. I was like, Aston, you are not leaving the studio, my friend. No, yeah. We worked too hard to get you. Yeah, so, so Jeremy. You can't write negative reviews now just because you're in the coffee. It, oh, exactly. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I uh, still haven't done Lord of the Rings. It's getting glowing results. Let me tell you. Everyone was trying to figure out why I'm sitting on top of Christian. It's because there's a microphone right there. It would have been <laughs> if Jeremy was over here like this. <laughs> I know. I can smell her perfume. Uh, so Jer- so Jeremy, give you a little uh, proper. Right now we're talking about uh, the Goonies. Okay. Um, and then we, you know, we had... Sean and told you weren't us alive little... to review that movie. <laughs> no, yeah. no, are you kidding me? That's a classic. I know. Yeah. Like, I never saw that movie until I was an adult. Born. Is that a weird thing to admit? Oh, yeah, 81. Yeah. What's, what's, he was born in 81. I don't yeah. even... God, I'm like Goonies was eighty five. Goonies, is fine, Goonies yeah. came out in eighty five, yeah, but I never but saw it until I was until I was in college. Actually, it was the first time I oh, saw it. That's Goonies. a great I'm point, so though. Happy. That movie just lives like mm-hmm. it's and someone told and me it holds up. There was someone who's like, oh, it's a little dated. That movie's it's not, not dated. It no, is one of the no. best adventure, not just kid films, adventure films. In, yeah. in, it's dated in a very specific. It's like a time capsule. Like, yeah. if you want to know? Everyone's like to me. People come up to me all the time and say that was my childhood, the eighties. It's like three bars into that song you're transported back right. to that time mm-hmm. you know and and the thing is too that, that that you know moving on a little bit from the goonies is that something i thought was is so was so great about you know your career is that you know you some people can get pigeonholed into the just the the kid role oh that's just mikey from goonies and you definitely did not do that as you moved on um well, no and what's interesting is that he did goonies and that changed a lot of people's childhood childhood the one that changed my childhood was when i was in sixth grade uh and i still i have the the great i don't want to name drop okay but yeah. i have the great fortune of seeing Pauly Shore on a regular basis <laughs> and I actually remember seeing you in Encino man and I just laughed my ass off that whole I loved love that movie <laughs> buddy <laughs> oh my god I love that movie so much yeah yeah, happy. That, that is what that's my brother in law was the best at that. He was like, he's probably, how old are you? I'm 32. No, you're, so you're having yeah. to spill all the beans, man. I know. Yeah, I know. Well, that's why you come on the radio. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No beans left. I'm 19 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 41. But the, uh, the, he, my bro- little brother-in-law came up to me. We were doing Rudy, mm-hmm. and uh, Rudy's kind of a more more serious kind of movie than Encino Man. And, uh, and he, we were in the makeup just just a little bit. <laughs> and he, I wasn't even sure that Matt's my brother-in-law's name and brother's name. I call my bro- he's my brother-in-law, but uh, and he he goes, you know, Sean, and he's dead serious. And I didn't even know like this kind of phraseology would was a part of his repertoire in Indiana. And he just said, where people assume that maybe there's a backward thing, but there's not. But uh, he said, uh, he goes, Sean, Encino Man was your best work. <laughs> you were great. <laughs> yeah, it was you were great. I was like, I don't know, I didn't think of like going on Lipton or whatever, going on the, the actor studio right. to talk about, you know, how I arrived at Dave Morgan. How did you get inside <laughs> of the skin of that character? You when know? I was a child. You just <laughs> believed it. You just believed this guy was digging a pool and he came on something. Polly Shore was being Polly Shore and it just, it, the movie just worked so well. Well, it helped, it helped a man find his cave nug, and that's not nothing. That's not nothing. <laughs> well, you know, you mentioned Rudy though too, and like that's, I think that's the only movie I've ever seen my dad like tear up at, and I'm sure you've heard that a million times as far as like dudes just breaking down. Like that one. Oh, every goddamn time that movie gets me. I <laughs> yeah. love that movie. It, yeah. it is. Yeah. Oh, it, my, like my wife is not a sports fan at all. Made her watch it, and she's just like. He made it. He yeah. made the team. Yeah. Like she's like cheering. Yeah. And well, I think the question is, Sean, are you like every other p- person in America when you yes. go to the gym? Do you listen to the Rudy soundtrack no. as well? <laughs> no. I, I think it's. I always when people compliment me about the movie, you, you gotta like. Are you gonna absorb the compliment? Like, oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. God, that's amazing. And you want to be gracious and grateful and honor the thing. But I always try and turn it somewhere else. And to me, Jerry Goldsmith's score in that movie is one of the greatest all-time, you know, not just film scores, but just Mm -hmm. pieces of music. And he was not nominated for an Academy Award that year. He had, I think, a a shelf full of trophies and everything else. But it was a kind of, just like the movie, the movie was not successful when it came out. It made like $20 I remember that. Which is, you know, by the studio standards, like it made back its... 
production budget. Yeah, but a little tw- more. twenty million back then, though, like, it, was, it was not successful. No, that's, huh? I mean, it's it's you know that's not a failure. It just holds up. It was, so well. they were they were disappointed. Yeah, right. it wasn't a failure. It wasn't a flop. They were disappointed. But I mean, the fact that it goes on to become this movie that is evergreen and, and every football season, you know, and like this year the NFL has had me come out and do a couple different things with them. That's and, cool. And, yeah. Oh, that's uh, Rudy's finally going to the yes, NFL. Right. Wow, Rudy's going to the NFL. Yeah, really for the Heisman House. You know their Heisman House yeah. thing. Yeah, I get. Uh, there's like a little tease there. And is then, that is that your idea for the sequel for that one? Or, or yeah, Rudy, Rudy, goes, <laughs> Rudy plays <laughs> NFL. Yeah. Well, see, the scene on the park bench is is the one that I think usually gets people the most. Is when he is when Rudy. This is his last chance to get into Notre Dame, and he opens the letter. What was going through? How many takes of that scene? It take to, to actually pull off because you you jump up at the end and then you go running off and you're so excited. Is that a whole day shoot or did you just knock it out of the park? It the was first time? Uh, it was magic hour in Hollywood parlance. It's like the sweet spot of sunset. Yeah. So yeah. that the golden dome of Notre Dame when they you know came there wasn't digital grading to the degree there is now if at all. I mean so you couldn't kind of just amp up the color of the dome just for look like that's the color yeah. that was captured with that film. Um, and so there was a it was a, a crane shot, which is really kind of an involved thing because he wanted the, uh, David Anspaugh designed the shot where Rudy's sitting at the bench, he sits down, and the Holy Cross Community College with its kind of bland brick st- stuff is there. And then as he opens it up, the dolly comes and it comes around and the music swells, and then finally it's kind of on his back as he finally gets in and you see the Golden Dome of Notre Dame. That was his concept for a shot. So what he didn't want, and he wanted to do it in one shot. Wow. He didn't want to like have a close up and then cut and see what he's looking at. He wanted it to be a fluid. Thing. So that's got to make you so nervous because you're like, if I beef this, we got to come back tomorrow and do the same thing. It was well, there was no coming. There were this was a lot of things about the about Rudy. Like we filmed the scene uh, of the halftime of the Boston College game. Uh, the the band, the Notre Dame band, seated like 15 minutes to us, and we had this really extensive choreographed scene because even though they had a few thousand extras, it's a you know 50,000 person yeah, stadium. Yeah. So there was really and there was no like adding in the fans later you know kind of thing back there just wasn't a digital realm so they wanted and needed for the for the you know guts of the film to have this thing and we got 15 minutes to do it once and we came back we we're going to do it a second time the next weekend and it was uh, the game against Penn State and they were it was a blizzard you couldn't use the footage so it was like that 15 minutes that was captured for that like four or five minutes on film is very and it wasn't oh, a high wow. budget movie they only had you know it was, a, it was a limited budget film and so they got it and the, it was the same thing so the stakes were definitely like every day very high with that mm-hmm. stuff the director it's kind of a long story that I, I talked about a lot and written about but because you are so earnest and I'm going to try and make you cry now the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Jeremy go back and get some clean yeah, right, 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 right. yeah. that's what, that's what Rudy does now. yeah exactly <laughs> like get Jeremy the fuck out of here the second, no, the second Jeremy can start throwing bombs by the second he's trying to ask him, you motherfucker don't <laughs> <laughs> I cried for Rudy. You yeah. sent me out for a napkin. <laughs> yeah. So, um, well, it's kind of a, we kind of have to gloss over your entire career, and it sucks because you have such a great one. It's like because we have 40 minutes with Sean, yeah. so it's like we I can feel your audience to... want to just hear the end of that thought, though. <laughs> yes. That Please. thought Get is in there, yeah. that the guy said, the director said, go over in the corner. I'm a talkative guy and a, a kind of. Uh, hell fellow, help well met kind of a guy, and yeah. he didn't want didn't want that. He's like, go over, don't you're not allowed to talk to anybody. <laughs> so like for three hours, I didn't talk to anybody. I read the script a couple times, sitting there and highlighted the rehighlighted things and thought through it. And, was, and I really had a problem crying in, in as an actor. I couldn't, you know, I had lots of little tricks and things I could do, but I didn't, I couldn't like really go there emotionally. And for the problem was Rudy wasn't out yet. So they're, they're like, I, if I need to cry, I think Rudy. <laughs> right, 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 right. It's like Spaceballs. You're making the movie, but right. it's not. <laughs> it's exa- If I need to cry, I watch Spaceballs. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't look Jewish. Uh, <laughs> uh, I love that movie. Uh, uh, may the Schwartz be with you. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, that, uh, that that movie, again, it, it is. It's one of the, they even, they, it, it breaks so many people down. They even did that. What's the new Sorkin? Uh, Newsroom, yeah, that yeah. was huge. Yeah. That was huge. Yeah, so that was like he he used that as a whole framework for an episode. I was right. Thinking. Yeah. And Sorkin's my uh, my hero. I mean, I love, I worship the guy's writing and his talent. And and uh, for for him to use that, and it wasn't even a scene I was in. It was a scene. It was actually the only fictitious scene, really fictitious scene in the movie. Which one? Where, and, and, this, where the guys they had to find a way to dramatize. What does it mean for the other players to stand up for him? All right. You know, mm-hmm. and, and right, what right, happened right, probably right. was they, you know, say to the coach, "Come on, coach, you got to let him in." That kind of thing, but it's not very cinematic. So they they invented this thing of like they come in and they lay the jerseys on the desk right. as a symbolic gesture. And that's the Joe Montana story they used to tell, right? Well, it's like Joe Montana came. He's like, I don't even remember hearing about the guy when he was there. But it, yeah. there's only there's not many times in my life that I'll be like, "Screw you, Joe Montana." Yeah, that, that, that's, you know, because the guy's it. a legend. But it's funny because 
Rudy, he's he may be like the worst Division One college football player that ever lived. Right. But it's just this story that we can all get behind because every kid grows up and we want to run out of a time. I, w- like, I, I so want to but, play so Wake Forest. But you have I to emphasize that. that Joe Montana is a legend. Oh, Joe Montana is a legend. Yeah. I, yeah. And because the movie Rudy has taken on a kind of mythological place in a lot of people's hearts, mm-hmm. like you're describing, it is possible to forget you know because you can watch nfl highlight reels you can look at trophies you can see a ring or whatever that guy you know and and you know i think he's had to endure and because a notre dame guy yeah. as all the notre dame people are you know i think if i feel a sense of responsibility as an actor in the movie to go like no 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 that guy's an actual legend like what he put down on uh, in history as a football player is yeah. se- second to none so in my opinion so having se- and of but and yet if, when he sort of like quietly asserts that he, there's this backlash. It's yeah. like, there can't be backlash. He's been so generous of spirit and like open and and whatever. It makes me want to cry like on the bench thinking about Joe Montana not happy <laughs> right. for some reason. Well, <laughs> now as and it's, with with that serious tone again, we had we talked about uh, Sean can nail the drama, she but it's a pretty girl talk once in a while for pizza. I know, I know, <laughs> I know. No, I, I, you know, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm being respectful. Please, you, anytime you want to jump in, well, Katie's, we, we have really the nerdy too. fans. Yeah. Anytime you want to chime in, yeah, anytime, they'll dig it. Please, because the Twitter's going to be like, how come she's not talking? Like well, Sean just did. I, Sean is, well, but Sean's only here for, for an hour and 45 minutes, so he, they've got me for two hours, so Keep as soon as he leaves, I'll, Keep I'll it be Look, guys, guys, Katie, don't be a class. To be honest, you can't just throw that in there. You wanna, all right, so did you see Rudy? I did see Rudy. Did I you did. think it was like a, a, a football I, movie I, going in? I, like yeah, a, like for a sure. lot of girls don't want to see it. Like, oh, see I grew up in a football family, though, so for me, it's like you know, football movies. I'm like, woo, woo. Right. I'm in mean, with Katie. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me, yeah. The yeah. first, first time I saw that movie, I was in seventh grade. It was one of those things. It's the end of the year. You're not doing anything. You don't do anything in the other 179 days of school if you can help it. But I didn't. Yeah, this teacher was like, oh, "Okay, we're gonna watch this movie." And I'm like, oh, "Okay." So you watch it, and it's junior high. It's seventh grade. You still, you know, you're gonna be back next year, and you're sitting there. You know, you're like. Your teacher showed you, Rudy. Yeah, I swear. That's, that's a, a teacher that just comes in class. Yeah, I'm awesome. really hungover. Here's a movie. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. even the same. It was like that's weekend at Bernie's. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I don't even know what what we're ca- learning about the, the human body, the biology <laughs> you can maintain after you die for a little bit. One parent gets pissed off and mm-hmm. calls the school. No, that's just that's the teacher that's going. How am I going to make these kids right. remember me for the rest of my life? Oh yeah, for sure. Rudy. Yeah, it yeah. is that, and he was probably like, "School system sucks anyway." Here's that's something right. that's relevant. All right, guys, yeah. we're here with Sean Aston, Katie Sackoff, Jeremy Johns. You can call us in at three two three six two two eight six two three. What's the number? Uh, three two three six two two eight six two three. If you have any questions for Sean, any... what you can see, Sean, is that he's cheating. It's written down right here. Yeah, I don't just remember. Oh. It's not okay. Thanks. It's, not, it's bullshit. I just stepped memorized. on him, and I wanted to make sure that people could hear the number. Oh. That's all right. Yeah. I thought you were like actually testing him. This is no. unbelievable. I'm getting called out by I got called out by Mike. I'm getting called out by you. I mean, everything that's happening now is Jeremy's uh, sick and tired at this point. Jeremy, yeah, exactly. We <laughs> Send got Jeremy to go get coffee and napkins. <laughs> yeah. Ellis is the only one right. who's yeah. actually uh, Christian. Having I hand think hand. you're doing great. You Thank you. I appreciate you it. Do, All right. go I'm, I'm going to go get coffee next. All right. So we have we got a phone call coming in here too. All right. Hey, you're on. You're in Schmoville. Uh, who do we got? Hello. Hey, man. What's up? Hey, uh, I have a quick comic for Katie quickly, and then I have a question for you guys, if you'll permit me. Sure, what do you got? Uh, Katie, I just want to say I am a huge fan of 24, and you were fantastic in Season 8. Thank you. So, you were awesome. Thank you very much. And um, I figure since I'm talking pretty much to the, like, the YouTube Avengers and these movie Avengers, I have a question about the Avengers. Sure, what do you got, man? Loved it. Um, with the with the build up to the Avengers, yes. with like Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, all these like movies leading up and paying off so well, having it such an impact. With the Avengers two, with such as you know all Iron Man three, Captain America two, Thor two, do you think it's going to be as impactful and as have the same intensity as the first one. That's great. Thanks for the question. Love Jay. that question. Can't wait to answer the second half of the show. Yeah, Back to Sean <laughs> Aston. And, um... I like that question. I want to hear the... And that one I have to listen to the darn show. Yeah, we're going to... If we're little... talking sequels, we're talking Goonies 2 or Encino Man. Yeah, I love, we're not I think talking... that's the best movie of the year, Avengers. I loved it. It's yeah, yeah, I think he, I think he agrees with yeah. Schmoes. Yeah. Ellis, really? five out of five Schmoes, yeah. my favorite movie of the year. Yeah, the yeah. second half of the show is going to be an all recap show of the summer. Uh-huh. So we will be answering that question. But we have Sean Aston here for a limited time, so we want to talk to him a little more about his stuff, and then we will definitely and get to that. 
Um, all right, we'll take another phone call. If you got a question for Sean Aston, please call in. Um, all right, you are in Schmoville. Who do we got? Anybody? No. No. This is William from Tennessee. Hey, William from Tennessee. What's up, man? What do you got? Uh, not much. Um, speaking of twenty four, I'm a huge fan of um, I'm a huge fan of that show, Katie. You were great on it. Thank you. And Sean Aston, you were awesome That's on right. it as well. Thank you. I was just um, gonna say. Yeah. I was wondering. Uh, I was gonna ask Sean. Do you have any inside info on The Hobbit that you could share with us? Mm. Uh-huh. Aha! Thank question. you very much, Jack yeah. Bauer. Takes on. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, perfect. Uh, I really don't. I've really been kind of separated from that uh, that experience. I'm kind of a a fan from from afar, uh, which is a bummer to a lot of people. But it's you know, I love that book. I had said from the outset when everyone else, when many people complained that you know they wouldn't be able to get the rights, you know, together to get the movie made. I said that's nonsense. They will absolutely 100% make it. Uh, even though I'm a huge fan of Guillermo del Toro, I was like, no, Peter's the only guy to direct the movie. The fact that they're turning it into three movies, I find shocking, and I'm like, you know, excited to. Are you excited about that? Or would yeah. you rather to see it as, a, as one long More piece? More is better. Or? Yeah, well, I, fuck well, it. And that's the thing. Is better, better, you know? That's a great question, though, too, because you, everyone else can be like, oh, it's Peter Jackson. He'll be yeah, able to pull you know it off. You know the guy. Yeah. Like, so, yeah. like, the fact that three movies that he's going to be able to stretch this out because the. For again, something like the Hunger Games with this third book, it's like 126 pages. Ooh, the Hobbits right. are sent to attack each other. They have yeah. to. <laughs> well, which Hobbit will be the soul survivor? <laughs> right. But you know they're stretching that movie out and they stretch the Twilight books out. And you're like, ah. But then when you hear Peter Jackson is doing it, you figure that him he he's gonna be able to write enough to where there's not just the style. It's there is substance. Well, they have to go to Lord of the Rings appendices and they have to go to the mm-hmm. Silmarillion, the sequel to the Lord of the Rings. And they're gonna have they have there's not enough story in the Hobbit for for it to sustain without doing that. So. You know what? You don't. You think it's a bad idea? Don't watch him. Right. This is this guy's magnum opus. He's yeah. created a billions and billions of dollar, you know, kind of experience for people. If he wants to make three movies, God bless him. Let him do it. You and know? you were one of the centerpieces of that billion yeah, let's, dollar let's, franchise. Let's get into that franchise. Yeah, here Jeremy, we go. Yeah, this is what Jeremy's been waiting for. Jer- I have. Jeremy is a huge, tremendous as the as the music is going to. As powerful as Overswell, all of us. Um, Jeremy is a huge Lord of the Rings fan, and you know, I knew you were very excited about to talk about this. Oh, yeah. I'm, we got to figure out, again, being part of one of these franchises, like how that that whole experience and how that went down. Like well, what do you What do you think? What do you want to What do you want to know specifically? I don't understand why hobbits don't wear shoes. Yeah. They're walking in mountains all day. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, like he was saying, uh, Lord of the Rings, I I think is one of the cinematic staples of not only modern time, but I mean, just film in general. You know, I mean, it, it broke ground. Before that, mm-hmm. it's like fantasy movies were. You know, okay, the '80s fantasy movies, and we're really sad that the 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 horse gets caught in the quicksand, and you, like the robotic birds right, flying and stuff. Right, and it's just like but, it looks so real. But this brought you it to walk before you can run. You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, this brought it. This refined it. It brought it to the Oscars. Um, it brought it. It made so much fucking money, and it was. I remember my friends and I. All we would do for every year, we knew about the next Lord of the Rings, the next one. So it was like a four-year event. And filming it, though, you guys were out there for a long time, right? We, I mean, yeah, it was. We were. It's funny you talk about that uh, barrier-shattering thing. The the Oscars, you know, the third Lord of the Rings won Best Picture for the third for Return of the King. Yeah, for sure. And uh, we all went up on stage. You know, there, mm-hmm. there's that thing that happens, and then that's the last thing of the show so they you know whoever it was comes out thank you very much you know and the curtain comes down and the curtain came down we were standing back there and i think Liv tyler and i were standing next to steven spielberg mm-hmm. and uh and he mm-hmm. just had this this satisfied i don't want to say bemused but he just he just had this little twinkle in his eye like he does and he says well you guys did it you did it and we were like you know we, we won the best picture kind of you know and almost didn't i don't know and he, he sort of meant like Hey, oh, this is what he said. He said every kid in America finally feels included in this yeah. celebration. Oh, for That's sure. Cool. Oh, yeah. 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 He tried with ET. You know what I mean? There, there are a lot of movies that are arguably, you know, d- deserve deserve that trophy. And uh, but he was like, you've done that you've, for all comic book fans, for all science fiction fans, for mm-hmm. all fantasy fans. This you collectively, Peter Jackson. And the whole the Weta crew and the special effects guys, you know, they they did that, and I'm thrilled to be a part of that. It's great. Well, it's great. I mean, the Oscars have always been; they've never been about what movie was successful at the box office. Yeah. Ever. The Oscars are about you know 
what actress, you know, transforms herself and, you know, gains 20 pounds or something. And, like, all of a sudden, it, that, like... She's not wearing makeup. Don't, don't go full Amazing. retard. Um, okay, so, 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 I mean, I think that, that, you know, for The Lord of the Rings to win was for the first time it's like it actually like transcended to the box office yeah. the, you know yeah, and I, I felt honestly, I swore to God and all my friends that you were going to get nominated for Best Supporting Actor for Return of the King. Yeah. And we all yeah. did. And I mean, you, any, you talk to anyone because you carried that element, you know, the Frodo Sam element so I well. Frodo, yeah, yeah, and literally yeah. you yeah. carried yeah. the guy yeah. up to the mountain. Get on my back, Elijah. Yeah, I'll take but, us through this. It was so great because at that point, you get the because you know, it's holy. All right, Frodo is going to save the universe. And then by the end, you're like, without Sam, that guy would have failed miserably. Eons yeah. ago, it would have yeah. failed in the first movie, you know. So and, you and really get the feeling that Sam is the one who's carrying him through this entire thing, and you 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 showed that so well. And I I, I just felt that to give you a best supporting actor nomination would have brought like, hey, yeah, he actually was one of the cornerstones of of that entire I moral compass. I actually got nominated for an Academy Award for a short film that I directed in '97. Oh. Or five or four. I if it was seven, like you were going up against Titanic, so that's tough. Can people no. find that it on YouTube? The, uh, they can't. It's, oh, they can't. It's, uh, no, I have to find some way to like make it available. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't really hold up very well, I don't think. But it's it's uh, the point is, so I've had that feeling, that sensation of being nominated for an award. I would have loved that. It would have just been so great. And they and the studio was pushing Ian McKellen and me, and I think they're they're pushing I think four or five of us. Mm -hmm. And what you know about the Oscars is. As a voting member since I've been 18 years old, my parent, my mother won an Oscar for playing Helen Keller, and my dad was nominated for a short film. Like we, I'm, I'm a part of the Academy ethos and uh, and culture, and so th the fact that they, it's it is a marketing tool in a in a very real sense that the studios use to promote the films, and that's one of the, as an as, as a member of the Academy, that's great. That's the whole point. You want to bring people to the to the movies, you know, more than more than they are, and and focus their attention on things they might not know about. But um, so it was. It felt so gratifying to be one of the guys that they were taking out full truck, you know, full page posters, yeah. you know, kind of in consideration yeah. for. I mean, that was a total ego bump. The way I, you know, and a lot of people have said what you're saying, and I'm very grateful for it. it the the trophy we did get one trophy that I like in my room that I can hold and it's heavy. Have you ever held a SAG award? They're That's pretty good. heavy. They're heavy. Yeah. They're yeah. like a they're like a 15 pound dumbbell. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's and it was an ensemble award. And really, how do you? It might have been a little. It might have been a little weird for, and this is probably you know because I think the Academy was certainly aware of voting for thirteen other Oscars. You know, I'm sure mm -hmm. they were aware of the actors who were eligible uh, in the category. Well, like, how do you choose out of a? It really right. is a team effort. How do you choose? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so great that people responded to mm -hmm. Sam and to that character that Tolkien wrote and to my performance, but. You know, Ian created the world for everybody. You know, Ian McKellen did, or or they're, they're everybody. Vigo, I mean, Vigo is incredible. Mm -hmm. Elijah, that it's a really hard part to play because it's a psychological and a spiritual and an emotional kind of thing that's happening to him. Hard to like dramatize. Everyone's mm -hmm. like, oh, Sam's the real hero. It's like, well, no, Frodo was taking on. I mean, if you take the story as it's giving itself to you, he. He's, he's like Christ. He's a Christ character. He oh. sacrifices right for every single every, person. Yeah. So how do you how do you choose? You, you really, it's probably it's, in the long run, even though it hurts to say it, it's probably better that it didn't. Oh, well, okay. Jeff! Jeff, our party pooping producer is playing that music because we have to go to a break, <laughs> oh. uh, which sucks. Um, Sean, we're you know we do these theme um, episodes. Also, sometimes we do, we've done Batman and the Avengers. We're going to do a Lord of the Rings one. If you're available, we would love to have you for that one. Love um, you. Okay, great. So I like you guys. You smells, I don't know if anybody's ever told you this, but you guys have voices for radio. Well, oh, thank yeah. You. This guy over here is... Uh, yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. They we both do. Thing, like, he looks like he's 14, but all of a sudden, he's like this man Jack. You're like, whoa. That's What's cool. wrong? We got Sean Astin here yeah. on the traffic five past the hour. Yeah, it's better than the dollar store Topher Grace and Dane Cook. All right, guys. <laughs> We're fellow hosts. We are. On the oh, yeah. Now, well, that's what we're going to do. So, Sean, what else, besides your, the show. Just, just, just one thing. Just because yeah. we're in the Toad Hop yep. and we have a new location, I'm the host of a political radio show, which is a little bit, I'm going to use a big word now, anathema to the Toad Hop. I don't oh, even know boy. what that means. So Where's I, Google? We'll look I'm, it up. I'm, I'm, I mean, <laughs> it's, I need this, to is why, this is why you know my mother, who's a teacher. This is I where it all mother. comes back. Thank you. I'm going to call her and talk you. about you. But, the, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's called Vox Populi, uh, Voice of the... 
occasionally interested people is what we call it. And then uh, <laughs> it's on Tuesdays, it's, yes. It's Thursdays, Thursday, noon yeah. to two. We're back to two hours. I was doing one hour for the summer. Back to two hours. And and uh, this morning I tweeted a, a, a clip from a New York Times article that just said that uh, the Republicans are using jobs, jobs, jobs as a Trojan horse to push through a massive, cons- uh, mean spirited. Uh, agenda and and so I want my I'm a I'm I'm a Democrat and but but the show is about being even yeah so I'm I'm trying to provoke the conservatives to really participate in the show and the whole point of it is or the whole foundation of it is civil discourse people have to be courteous polite to each other and then like let's really get into some of the issues that people want to talk about for longer for you know a half hour or something okay so make sure it. you check that out and then we're sad to lose him now but we'll have him back ladies Thanks and gentlemen Sean Aston pleasure Thank to have you, you man Thank you, Jerry, for the coffee yeah no problem man. hey. And Jeff, get on it, Jeff. Get on. It. All right, guys. So how 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 fucking cool was that? That was that wasn't bad. one for That's the inner childhood. Yeah, my na- now we can all nerd out. And- you know what's crazy? We all came to the table. We knew we had the Sean Aston interview, right? And we're all excited this morning, but we're all excited for different reasons. Jeremy gets out of bed because of the Lord of the Rings. Christian wants yep. to talk Goonies. I want to talk Rudy and Encino Man. Right. <laughs> Yeah. I had You're to talk Encino Man, man yeah. for a minute. I, I can't let that slip by. Can we uh, talk about the fact that he was in a Speedo in 51st Street? I know, like I know. I was going to ask him about that. that. I love that. We I had no it. time. We had no time. He was um, funny in that movie. Yeah, yeah. he was. He was funny. Yeah. All right, so now we're back We're back to uh, basics, and we're going to be doing... So here's the thing. We wanted Just to get in... Just boring old Jeremy Johns and yeah. Katie yeah. Sackoff. Now, Katie... Yeah. Katie what Katie, we do? Um, you had a story you were telling us beforehand. I don't remember. You don't remember it? Oh, you mean that you want, one. Do you want to talk about that? Or no, you don't we can have totally to. talk about it. Okay. Well, you um, mentioned you mentioned the term. Well, yeah, it's just, it's just look, I did, I did. look. We, we was called something. Yeah, but the thing is, it's like there are trolls, especially you know everyone in this room has dealt with their fair share of trolls. Yes. You don't yeah. feed oh, the yeah. trolls. Yeah. And and you know Katie's been has gotten a lot of comments from people over the years, but something pissed you off. You know. It, it, I nothing but nothing phases me like it does it really doesn't phase me I I think that people have their opinions and they can say whatever they want about me it doesn't matter if you say I'm the ugliest bitch in the entire world Uh, well let's not go that far no but you're entitled to your opinion it doesn't bother me but somebody actually called me classless (laughs) and for the first time in my life I didn't sleep last night. Because of that? Yeah. Classless? Well, it wasn't just classless. Well, they call me a classless whore, but yeah. I know uh, right. that that's yeah. not true. The whore so part, that doesn't, that doesn't matter. It's the classless. The classless, but the whore doesn't bother me. Right. I am a lady that uses right. two forks at the dinner table. <laughs> God damn it, and I know that the little one is for the salad. Go fuck yourself. No, I mean, it just, it, for the, and for some reason... Because I guess, and I guess why it bothers me is that the fact that because I'm so honest all the time and I like to give people a glimpse into who I am, I guess somebody could think that I am, and that yeah. actually hurts. Well, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. I, th- and I just think you say, fuck them, you know, at this point. Yeah. It's just like... Cause well, that would be class. <laughs> yeah. I think I think the well realization played. and the reality uh, that uh, a nine year old in his mom's basement's opinion it shouldn't keep it right. Up. It's I, true. Jeremy, have you ever had that hey, happen? Mom, where somebody comments on one of your videos and, and calls it just me a classless whore. It, it just well, no, obviously <laughs> you have you have tons of class. Yeah, I mean you're wearing a collared shirt for God's sake. We're on the radio, class. but I, we're, but we are, but we're back. Everyone's in the studio. But the cool thing is, a lot of people we didn't, couldn't really talk about it before because it was just wasn't enough time. Um, for those of you who have been listening to the Schmozo podcast for a while uh we had uh, a lot of fun i think it was like 20 something episodes in and katie actually pranked jeremy johns i remember yeah yeah it was a lot of fun it was terrible i mean it's wonderful but terrible right and so that so and and the funny thing is that every time jeremy was supposed to be on the podcast or calling like uh, coming for the reviewers katie was out of town yeah she's like fuck that guy i'm not (laughs) ever meeting that shithead to the point when jeremy thought that katie was blowing him off (laughs) jeremy thought i'm coming into town this class was whore is going to go out of town (laughs) (laughs) it was you. Uh, it was, uh, it was sh- you. I'm really sorry about oh, that. God. Shut up, Mark. You just ruined it for me. I know, it's true. Um, so it's good to have them in the studio together. So the second half, uh, once we're, wrong. yeah, we're just gonna, you know, we're able to kind of shoot the shit a little bit, <laughs> to, you know, lay the groundwork because in the second half of the show, we're gonna be doing a summer recap. So all the stuff that we all the fun stuff we did this summer went to Yosemite. No, 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 no. That's not. Alfred calls it Yosemite. Yosemite. Good Canadian. When when you when you look like her, you can call whatever you want. Uh, (laughs) So yeah, um, we're talking summer movies. We're talking summer movies. Stuff that because it's great to have Jeremy here too because we're going to talk about kind of things that we like, things that were disappointing, things that sucked. Things Um, that make you go. "Hmm." Mm, I I cannot wait for this conversation. It's going to be fun. We all have our adamant thing where it's like I don't believe, I don't agree, I don't agree. And it'll be great to have Katie's perspective because. I know Katie's super busy, unlike us slobs, where we're not. We're just going to see movies all the time. Right. So she's, you know, she hasn't seen everything. So it'd be nice to have kind of her questions as far as like 
what do you guys think about this? Why did it suck? So it's going to be a whole different type of questions from a classless whore. That's right. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> questions and, and yeah. answers. <laughs> and that will be going on in the second half. So before we do that, why don't you guys call in at 323-622-8623, 323-622-8623. If you have any questions for Katie, for Jeremy, for the Schmoes, uh, we're talking uh, right now, whatever you want to talk about until we get to our second half of Summer Recap. We've got a call coming in right now. All right. Hey, man, you're in Schmoville. What do you got? Um, no, you got hey, to... um, just aside from missing freaking John Aston, I want to talk about um, if you knew anything about the Ninja Turtles, because Sean Aston right. is supposed to voice one of the Turtles. Yeah, he is. Thanks, dude. He's uh, he's actually supposed to be Raphael in, in the in the new one, and uh, he's channeling the anger. Yeah, what's that? He's channeling the anger. Yeah. Raphael's angry. Yeah, so um, he, he that that dude can pull off anything. That's the yeah. thing with him. Sean's such an amazing actor. I mean, he comes from a family. Of, right. Like, I mean, yeah. he's been in this business for so long. It's like he grew up knowing how to act. It's like I mean, in the DNA, it's in his blood. Yeah. 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 Um, all right, we got a couple more calls here. All right. These scholars are tough to rope it's down. Like, hey, this is what we want to talk about. What do you guys think about pizza? <laughs> <laughs> you want like sausages or is there more hey, man, hey, man, you're in Schmoville. What do you got? Thing to say. Very good. Hey. Hey, dude. Hi, this is Justin. Hey, Justin. Justin. Hey, um, I was just wondering if you guys heard about The Hobbit and um, the fact that the 48 frames per second is now only being shown in, like, L.A. and New York and what you guys thought of that. Yes, thank you, dude. I don't yeah. know what that means. Well, oh, no, no, let's fill you in. Yeah, Jeremy, go ahead. Fill her in. <clears throat> All right, so movies are filmed in 24 frames a second. Okay. Um, Peter Jackson filmed it in 48, so it's twice the resolution. It's twice the speed. It looks like, have so you ever... That just means it's faster? It means that... More it, real. It's, yeah, it's super, more, super Yeah, HD. have you ever seen... you ever gone to Best Buy and they had the Automotion Plus on? It almost looks like a soap opera, and you're like, this movie shouldn't really look That's like this. That's my TV in my bedroom. It kills me. Yeah, that is what The Hobbit supposedly okay. was mm -hmm. supposed to look like. He screened it at Comic-Con. Where was it? Was it Comic-Con? Not Comic-Con. There was something right before him yeah, I which yeah. one was but yeah he screened it and people nuts. flipped out they were like Looks too this real. is not what I like this is not the Hobbit and so I mean people were just going bananas and so I guess he was like alright we'll just do it in a couple cities but for the most part it's 24 frames a but second it does freak you out a little bit because it I don't does. want to the junior bought himself a TV with Jeremy Johnson's help this weekend and, and when I when I installed it initially it had the 40 yeah. it, it looked Thank like you. that and I'm thinking Jeremy's like no you get used to it I'm like it's freaking no, me out I, I hate it I didn't no. just say you'll get used to it I got used to it because I was like no I'll watch all my Blu-rays like this, and you do. No. You're like, yeah, I like it. No, it's you don't. Everything looks like a reality show. I hate it. I'm like, these people look like they're in the Join the dark side, and that, well, That's Join the beauty the of side. like tw the 24. Yeah. No. The 24 frames is beautiful because it gives that kind of fantasy, like it's not real. Thank you. And I know, and I agree with you. I, I don't want to see it super real. But I'm it, glad, and I think he realized though. He'll he'll never come out and say it because nor he, nor should he. But he's just he's just like right now, it's not ready. Uh, That'd don't, be a great don't press release. Ah, fucked up. Yeah. I made the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I think I'm. I think you can forgive me on this one, guys. Do you want to put them on? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, sorry. Experience the show. Yeah. All right. Let's, the way it was meant to be right. heard, Jeremy. All right. Let's take another call. In, in 48 frames a second. That's right. Uh, we got another call coming in. Hey, man, you're in Schmoville. What do you got? Hey, guys. Hey, dude. Uh, I did call earlier and I asked the Avengers question. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. I don't, know. don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I got another question you. for you guys. What's up, man? You make fun of everybody. You and your Avengers. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's all right. Um, I want to ask you about Lincoln, the new Daniel Day Lewis movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, all right, yeah, we'll talk what about What do you feel? I really want to hear your opinions about this. Daniel Day Lewis, Steven Spielberg. And even Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter, compared to this. Okay, <laughs> thanks a lot. No, it's, it's, well, all, it's, it's not going to be the Oscar winner that yeah. Abraham Lincoln, yeah. Vampire Hunter right. was. Right. Um, well, you know what's crazy about that is we talked yeah. about it in our um, Jeremy and Mark and I. We have a, a four-part special of the fall movie preview coming out. You can find part one on Jeremy's channel next Monday. Uh, yes. Part two, the fall. You know, every Monday will be on um, each of our channels, and we were talking about. Lincoln. Yeah. And I saw a picture of Daniel Day Lewis Blows as Abraham mind, Lincoln. I, it's crazy. Have you seen it, Katie? No, but I Daniel have to, Day can, Lewis can you pull has it this up? way yeah. of, of Maybe. Okay. completely immersing himself in his characters, oh, yeah. and he is unrecognizable. Mm -hmm. It is insane. I showed yeah. both my wife and my father-in-law, and I said, who's this? And they said, Abraham Lincoln. Like mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. No, he's amazing. He's, yeah. I mean, it's it, when people always say, who's a dream person for me to work with, it's, it's Daniel Day Lewis. Like, yeah. That's the He's correct amazing. answer across the board for any be. job you have. The, the little girl at Starbucks, she would have said the same thing. Who do you want to work with, or Daniel Day Lewis? Yeah. Gary Oldman. Those are my 
too. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's just because, the, and as far as what we think about the movie, it's going to be fantastic. And it's a definite, and we, that was the one thing we predicted in the special. Yeah. It's the one that will be nominated <laughs> for an Of course. An, of course. He'll get nominated. He he, he uh, he's got to get nominated, nominated for a Best Actor. Yeah. Right? Now, is it is it like the, is it his entire life? Like, are we going from when he's chopping out trees as a kid to the Ford Theater? Or is that, is it, is it one part in his well, life? Not his entire well, life. The I, entire yeah. Thing. It, Jesus Lord. It's going to, it's going to skip <laughs> the Jesus vampires. Lord, <laughs> Uh, I think it's going to be, yeah, you skip over the vampires. Yeah. It'll probably be like how he made it through. It'll probably be like a three hour movie, and then they'll, they'll show, you know, the Wilkes Booth stuff. And, yeah. and then, Who's playing John Wilkes Booth? You know, yeah. Here it is. Look at this. Look at that picture. Is that insane, Katie, or what? Holy yeah. shit. That's, look, guys, yeah, that's the guy. If you have not seen the picture of Daniel Day Lewis as. This, this is blowing you know, minds. It's, look at that picture. It's insane. No, you know what? But you know what? It still looks like Daniel Day Lewis. It, you if you really, if you really look in into eyes. it, but initially when you see it, you go, "That's yeah. Abraham fucking." Lincoln. Yeah, and it might yeah, be one of those things where crazy. we know it's Daniel Day Lewis, so we know what to look for. But if you right. just no. went to someone who no. didn't know, no, yeah, oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> see, it, when we do these things, there's one surefire thing. Agree with me, you'll always be right. Uh oh, look <laughs> at this guy. These guys. Pomp, guy's in L. A. for not a few days, it. and he's already a pompous <laughs> asshole. <laughs> All right, we got another classless whore. That's right. All right, you were supposed to find out that was me. All right, hey, hey, man, you're on Schmoville. You have Katie Sackoff. You have myself. Jeremy Johns and the classless whore Mark Ellis. Hello. <laughs> Hello, who we got? Hey, it's Matthew. What do you think of Taken Two? I mean, besides the ridiculous title of Taken Two, do you think right. it need another one? Do we really need who wants to see Liam Neeson have his whole family taken again? <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> I, I think Thanks, I think Matt. they're gonna ask questions that we we We've answer covered, yeah. uh, in our fall mm -hmm. movie preview. It's, so. it's true. Yeah, you know what that one will do just very briefly. It's just like it's it's <laughs> Liam Neeson. Said summer recap. I know this is. I know. Well, that's our. This is the end. The summer recap doesn't no, start yet. So they can ask fun. whatever they this want. This is why we have the two hours because now we can we yeah. can just go off on these tangents. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. right. You, can, you guys can ask right now. For the first, we're still in the first half, so you guys can ask whatever you want, and then we're gonna get into the summer recap. Um, we got one more question coming in from from the Take phone. Taking two looks cool though. Like I'm all. These are gonna be like the paranormal activities where every year his family gets kidnapped yep. again, and I'm like, that bring it on. Um, yeah. I love I love Liam Neeson, I, and I, I would just let him do anything. As a badass, he's so much yeah. fun. So he's good. He's so good. I you know I don't really enjoy Maggie Grace in the movies. I think yeah. that she was a bit too old. Yeah, and she right. sucks. All right, guys. So um, <laughs> she's old. And she sucks. Yeah. That's worse than classes. That, no, you can. I can. She you're sucks. Katie. You're old and you suck. I think that would hurt that, worse. Yeah. Actually, that would, I would have been like, you're fine. There you right. Go. All right. Hey, you're in Chicago. Who do we got? Hello. Hey, man. You're you're in. Who, who, I can't say anything now. Who do we got, man? What's up? <laughs> Anybody? Oh. I was on a delay. Uh, sorry, I think I'm on a, a bit of a delay here. Hold on. Yeah. That's okay. What What do you got, man? Um, well, that's why I've got a comment and then a question for Katie. Sure. I have, well, yeah, I, I had never watched any of Battlestar Galactica. I didn't know who she was or anything. Hang up the fucking phone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? And, okay. Um, no, hold on. No, no, no. Give me a second. Here, give me a second. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm watching, um, I'm watching the, um, some of the leaked footage for the season eight of 24 and she comes on the screen and people are going nuts and i think who the hell is this chick but i started watching 24 and she blew me away she's one of my favorites on the show now uh, i just you know thought i'd say that first well it's very nice yeah, of you man thank you well, look this um, but a uh, quick question for her though sure uh i've also um because i know uh lucy lawless was on battlestar galactia I was running. What was it like working with her? Because I was such a huge fan of Dina as well. Oh, Great, right, thanks, for man. For sure, for sure. Good question. You know, I am. Um, I as a little girl growing up, wanting to like be involved in action movies. There really weren't. There was a handful of women to kind of like you know try and emulate. You Cynthia know, you Rothrock. Had, you had, yeah, I <laughs> yeah. don't even know who the fuck that is. <laughs> um, you had Sigourney Weaver. You had Linda Hamilton. You know, but someone who who came into my living room on a weekly basis was Lucy Lawless and Xena, and I absolutely loved Xena. Like I wanted to be Lucy Lawless, and. Um, because it seemed attainable for some reason for me because television was so much more um, friendly. It was in your living room every day or every week. And mm -hmm. and um, so Lucy always kind of like felt kindred to me. So when I actually got to work with her, I was like, this is awesome. This is like the coolest thing ever. So. Yeah, it was How many times a day does she get asked to do that yell? 
that Xena Warrior I mean, Princess. Yeah. I think it's probably the same thing as people saying, "What do you hear, Starbuck?" It's like, really? Can we stop? Yeah. Can we? Can we stop? Yeah. <laughs> I can't. You got it. She she must have done that in the bedroom one time to please some guy. <laughs> yeah, she's sure. jumping off the chandelier like spread eagle like oh. under her husband. Oh. It'd be the greatest Woo! thing ever. I don't, I don't know about her, but I do that yell when I pleasure on my own self. So. <laughs> I do too. As, yeah, right? one, as yeah. one should. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you were doing in the shower this morning? It's a bit off. Dude, yes, part, absolutely. <laughs> right, right before I commented on her and called her a uh, classless arm. Oh, right. perfect. All right, we got another call before we go to one more minute. All right, hold on, we'll take one more call oh, before God. we have to go to break, and then we're going to start a recap. It's going to be fast. Hey, man, Schmoville, you are in. What do you got? Yoda over here. Yoda. 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 Hello. Schmoville, you are. Hey, uh, I was wondering what you think of The Hobbit tr being a trilogy, because... I remember that uh, the story was act the story of the Hobbit was actually only one book, and the other movies were only one book, one movie. So, what do you think of the story being three movies? Because are they going to show more of Middle Earth, or are they just going to spread the entire story of the Hobbit even more? Thank you. I find that kind of unnecessary. Thank you. Uh, well, we actually touched about it a little bit when Sean was here, and if uh, you know, and we all think that we can spread it for sure. Um, I'm okay with it, and I think that's yeah. the consensus in the, around the room. Yeah, especially when Sean was like, "I know Peter Jackson, the man will yeah. do it well." And yeah. So we're like, oh, "Okay, well, if he says it, I mean, we can yeah. all speculate, but he he has a pretty credible opinion on the matter." And so. I've never read the book, so you could have a Hobbit moan on one. I'd be like, "Well, I guess that's what happens yeah, in the book." So. <laughs> all right, guys, we're going to go to our second break here, and when we come back, we're doing a full summer recap that's with cool. Katie. Sack off Jeremy Woo! Johns, myself, and Mark Ellis. Get ready for your summer movie recap questions. Ooh, easy, guys. Easy. These two, these two are ready to brawl. <laughs> All right, guys. Welcome back to the Schmoes No Podcast. We're here with the great, the wonderful. Thank you. Mark Ellis. <laughs> ah, see, so I gave it to you. Um, and Jeremy Johns and Katie Sackhoff. What a really cool stack show. The first half, we had the, we, we actually, these two giggling uh, school Thank you children. Much. Um, we had uh, the great Sean Aston on, which was so good. If you guys missed it, we'll be, you know, it'll be posted up. It'll be on Toad Hop later on. And he was fantastic, oh, he was man. So good. You never know really what you're going to get with, the, with, with, with these big time actors. You yeah, just don't know if they're going to be cool never met or not. Him before? No. We met him at Comic Con, yeah, we but met, it was but, just a brief, you know. Hey, yeah. how you doing? We the, the way show. that it worked, like we we did, um, because we knew he was on Toad Hop, right. and I saw him at Comic Con. and We started talking. He knew us from the, we have the video, but he's like, he's like, oh yeah, you know, you're the movie guys. He's like, I want to do your show. And we're like, perfect. Whenever you want to. Yeah. Yeah. I met um, Sean at a, at uh, a convention in London like ten years ago, almost now, and um, he ended up. Um, Becoming close with my mom, um, kind of bonding over that she's a teacher and, yeah, yeah. and all this stuff. So, um, yeah, he's great. Yeah. What season of Twenty Four was Sean Astin on? Was he, he wasn't on yours? It was like five or six. No, he or was something. in five or six. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, he had. I mean, was the last one. Yeah, I, I was like, I'm not going to spoil it, but the, the, when the last part of his storyline is is insane. Yeah, so if you haven't checked out Sean on 24, but we're not talking about Sean Astin anymore as much as we will when he comes back for Lord of the Rings. We are talking about the summer movie recap. We're here with Jeremy Johns. And Jeremy, we got to go into some of our movies as far as... Do, now, here's a question as far as... Do we want to talk about the first half of the year, or just let's just do summer? I think you can gloss over. Maybe maybe we can start with what was your favorite movie of the summer. Yeah, so summer. just go All around. Right, let's just do that. We'll do summer. It's going to be because I've seen one. Oh. Which was... What was that, Avengers? Ted. That's it. Ted, okay. Well, that's not a bad not one to see. It was the best one to see. I haven't seen anything else. Wow. Nothing else got Katie Sackhoff's dollar that's this summer. That's not true. No? What, what else did you see? I saw two cartoon movies with Trisha Helfer and my friend Brian. What, and what, our friend Brian. What was it? We drink vodka and watch 3D movies. Um, kids movies. Was, you guys are you guys are. That, that's fun. my rating. A uh, good time if you're drunk. Together, yeah. Which is really fun. Um, God, I can't even remember what the hell they were. Oh, um. Ice Age 4. Um, Happy Feet 2. Okay. okay. Oh, that was. That's why we need alcohol to get to uh, There's just something about those damn penguins. I just can't stand some, the penguins. What was the other one that came Happy Feet Two was last year, wasn't Heck. it? No, uh, it was Happy Feet Three. It, it, you know what? If she's it drinking in a movie matter. theater, she may not have the exact. Yeah, day. it doesn't matter. It's totally true. Oh no, she's we, right. It was Happy up, Feet was in March. Yeah. Yeah, we polished up a bottle of vodka between the three of us during Ted, and we. I think at one point we got kind of all were like, hmm. All right. Well, here. Is that bear really talking? Yeah, it's true. All right, we're gonna. So, what, so that's a great question, then, Mark. So, thank you. What was your favorite summer movie so far? And again, Katie, if you haven't seen any of these, it's fine. You have your questions about them that you want to ask, and what we liked about them, what, what, whoever, or what your thoughts are. I have my opinions on. Why yeah, I didn't perfect. See them. Okay, so all right, now, Mark. 
What is your favorite yeah. of the summer? You might as well rephrase it. Do you prefer Dark Knight Rises or Avengers? Yeah. That's that's what it's going to boil down to yeah. for a lot of people. And for me, it is that question, and I answer that with a resounding The Avengers. I yeah. thought The Avengers was so perfect. The tone was perfect for what it was trying to do, and I just had so much fun at the movie for two and a half hours. I didn't want it to end. That's very rare for me to say because I have the bladder of a four-year-old girl. Right. All right well, I would have pissed myself and still watched that movie. I am on, yeah. I'm on the other okay. side. <laughs> it's on the yes, poster. Uh, I peed in a big gulp cup because I didn't want to go to the can you guys during this that? movie. Avengers was so good, I just peed in a big gulp cup! <laughs> that happened in There's... Real Steel. I pissed in my monster cup. I was like, whatever. You had to. Real yeah. Steel. That movie was not that bad, by the way. That's, right. that, that's last year. They picked Evangeline Lilly over me. It came down to she and I. Oh, it's bullshit. Oh, really? Oh, no, that's bullshit. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. Okay, so that's another. That's, that's a, a whole one. other that podcast. That's a hard one to swallow. Yeah, that was a, and that was a good movie, too. Um, yeah, fuck you. I, yeah, man, you really missed it. <laughs> that would have done wonders for your career, let me tell you. Yeah. Um, okay, well. Miss that, Mark. Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> all right. Uh, it's just a fuck you, classless whore. All right, so. Um, <laughs> yeah. all right, now we have. So for me, I'm on the other side. I, I love Dark Knight Rises. Um, I just thought that it was a perfect ending to that trilogy. I love what Christopher Nolan did with the movie. I am okay with the Adam yeah. West ending that uh, Ellis likes to refer to it as. Uh, you so, see the Dark Knight Rises, so mad. Katie. I, yeah. we, we've got to so pay. Mad. I'll pay. I'll give her the money to go see this movie because hey. I want her opinion. Just on remember, it. agree hey. with me. Did, did, right. did I start getting all pissy and like start stomping my feet when you said the Avengers? I wasn't stomping my feet when you said the you, Dark Knight wasn't Rises. Wasn't he getting pissy? Okay, time out, yeah. boys. <laughs> we'll be <laughs> over Katie here. Started. Come on. <laughs> Jeremy Tiebreaker. Yeah, Jeremy, what do you got? Um, I... Yeah, I gotta agree with uh, Christian Harloff over here. I'm like, um, he's eyeballing me right now. He's looking at me like, "Who's inflated better? Are you sleeping on right now?" <laughs> <laughs> it's totally true. But it's one of those things where I can't argue someone for saying the Avengers because the Avengers was so kick ass yeah, and it was just so sure. much fun. It was everything that you wanted to see in the years leading up to it. And you're like, great, great. They pulled it off perfectly. But the personal story of Bruce Wayne and just uh, the the way it was so ballsy. I mean, if I mean, are we talking about spoilers on here? Um, I think Please it's this. Please don't tell me anything. Okay, all right. <laughs> no, I think it's... Uh, no, the same. I think that's... No, why, all right. Do you yeah. want to see? Oh, yeah, wait, wait. yeah, she wants to... I won't spoil no, it for her. No, we'll won't spoil it. Won't spoil uh, it. It's fine. He took the movie in directions that just surprised me that was really gutsy, and directors usually wouldn't do it. Right. They'd right. play it safe, but the, he was like, no, this is the conclusion of the trilogy. I'm doing this. And it it was just... It was surprising to me, and I loved it. Yeah. So. And Katie, were you a fan of the, of the first two? Yeah, I've seen every Batman movie. Okay. <laughs> so... so I'm a, I'm a really big fan. I mean, nice. I, I didn't, um, um, I didn't, and you, we, you proved me wrong last time. Actually, I said that I didn't necessarily agree with Anne Hathaway. I didn't, I don't find her to be like, you know, is in my mind, I, I, I think that that character needs to be voluptuous and sexy and like mm -hmm. this. You like, were up for that role too, weren't you? No, I wasn't. No, not at all. And but I, I just didn't see her in that role. But you yeah. said that she's amazing. So and it's funny too because well Jeremy had seen it before I did and 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 I and he said I just saw Dark Knight and I, Dark Knight Rises. I had to rub his nose. In yeah, that and, shit. and I what I was like, and I asked him the first thing I said I was like how is Hathaway? He goes yeah. pretty good. And he and I are on. This, I did not say pretty good. He's, I said she was great. You did. Okay. You did. You did. <laughs> she's you did. a phenomenal actress. I just didn't think she looked the role. And, in, and look, it was my biggest thing seeing those trailers. I'm like Anne Hathaway's just not going to do we this. We both talked about that. It's like 100%. it's like this trailer, this movie looks yeah. awesome. It's just Anne Hathaway. It worries me a little bit, yeah. but you trust Nolan. Yeah, yeah. You go into it, and she she, she brought it. Out of the park. She brought it. And well, I'm the, excited to see it. Yeah, yeah. and it, it's just one of those things. She really she delivered. Mm -hmm. And um, well, what's fantastic about the the fact that we're arguing which one of these movies was the best one of the summer is that they were both in a way the Avengers kind of closed the book. It opened a new door because you're obviously going to have the Avengers too. What mm -hmm. our callers asked about earlier, but you had starting back with Iron Man, you had all these different movies coming together. This just almost felt like the culmination of all this work that Marvel did. And then you also have all this work that Christopher Nolan did rebooting the franchise, yeah. getting it away from the Joel Schumacher bat nipples badass stuff mm -hmm. yeah. and now, and and so the fact that we liked both of them as much as we did is pretty cool that you can close a book yeah, that, yeah. Sure. Yeah, but here's the thing though, can, can they really never make another Batman? No, they're going to make another one in a year. Everybody they're said they're, they're going to. Oh, okay. Yeah, but the question is, I, I thought this was like the end. This is no, the end of Christopher end of Nolan's trilogy. Yeah. Okay. So okay. they okay. may not make Thank a you. Batman okay. that's that yeah. good. Now okay. the, the question yeah. is, there's without spoiling it for you, there is a way if they wanted to to continue that line. Um, even if they want to do it a little different, they, they could do that. Now that's the question: Are they going to do that, or are they going to just reboot it completely? Um, we don't we'll want to spoil it for you. Batman ends up in the Lost Souls room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So all right, we're gonna take got a, some ghosts. All right, guys, <laughs> we're, we're taking. We'll make sure hey, you can tweet any one of us. You can tweet at Katie Sackoff, at Jeremy Johns, at Schmoes. No, ask us some questions about the summer movie season, and we have a couple phone calls: three two three six two two eight six two three. All right, so you are in Schmoville. Who do we got? 
Hey, this is Justin again. Hey, man. I got a question for. Hey, I got a question for Katie. Yeah. Um, how was Batman Year One? And since you were sleeping with him in the movie, did you get to meet Brian Cranston? For a Perfect. second, I was Perfect. like, "Who am I sleeping with?" <laughs> since you're sleeping with him, let me know who I'm sleeping with. Um, you know, I um. What was Ernest Borgnine like in the bedroom? <laughs> I um I loved doing that movie. I I absolutely loved doing um, animation and and um, Brian Cranston is I'm such a huge 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 Brian Cranston fan. Yeah. Um, that I got to meet him um, sitting next to him at Comic Con when we did the panel for um, wow. Batman Year One. So it made me really really. Happy. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's was, not bad. It was pretty awesome. I was like, wow, this is this is a cool moment in your life. That is really cool. All right, so guys, we're taking some more calls. Summer movie season. What were your favorites? What did you like? What do you want us to talk about? Um, all right, we're taking another call. Got someone calling in from Schmoville, trying to get this new phone system down. All right, hey, you're in Schmoville. Who do we got? That's uh, me. All right, hey, man, what's up? Hey, I was just uh, wanting to ask some questions. Sure. What, what are your questions? <laughs> Oh, um, I was wondering, um, other than the obvious uh, Avengers and Dark Knight Rises, what's your favorite movie of the summer? Yeah, other than those two. I, I was hoping Great, that thanks, we would man. talk about other movies. Yeah, let's yeah get, we are. Let's we get are. the bronze medal here. These <laughs> right. two were like Phelps and Lochte competing for the, for the gold, and then there's <laughs> yeah. other great movies. So. Well, what else was even out? Ted. Oh, oh man, Ted, there's tons right. of stuff. And then, yeah. you know, you, you want to get this one out of the way, so we're, and it's not a full podcast, you talk about Prometheus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Jeremy's like, oh, I don't want to talk about. Uh, yeah, I've talked about Prometheus. It's I know, so but we got- in, in a weird way, Prometheus kind of reminded me of the movie we saw last night, Premium Rush, where our review is going to be out later today. But it's like both of those movies. It's like the more you think about them. Like the longer, the, the the more you're like, what the fuck? What was? Yeah. What did, what? No, I, no. I read, I read no. the script for Premium Rush and was like. Right. Was, yeah, we good, were talk, good, wait, wait, wait. Was... I, I, got, I got to cut you off because every every episode we get a great tweet from our buddy Ken Napsack. I saw it. It's oh, pretty, he's got it's such a good fantastic. one. <laughs> at Schmozno, at Katie Sackoff. Classless Whore by Chanel is now the top selling fragrance at Rite Aid and most pilot truck stops. <laughs> I just saw that and started pissing myself. I thought it was Kenny is the best. Pilot truck stops. Yeah. Wow. Oh, so good. Good. How about a so Flying good. J Travel yeah. Plaza reference? Yeah. If you guys don't follow Kenny Napsack on uh, Twitter, make sure that you do. It's at K O Z P A N. He's a good buddy of the show and he's a he's a really funny dude all and right they need to retweet that That's yeah he's funny. really good and katie sackoff should follow him too uh, um listen i'm just telling you okay so yeah prometheus sorry the thing is that um with that movie i was so excited about that film because and we won't get into the whole prequel stuff mm-hmm. that's just, yeah. just a whole other episode but it's it's the fact that it, it's related to aliens somewhat and just even if it's mythology whatever and that to me was exciting and the fact that ridley scott was coming back mm-hmm. um and i said um you know I was just let down a little bit by the film overall because I wanted it to be. I thought it could be the one that I'm like that was honestly one of the best movies of the summer. Mm-hmm. And it was it was fine. Yeah, yeah, it was. It's one of those ones where I think fine is the that's the word for it. You get yeah. out and you're like, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. I yeah. mean, are you gonna see it again? Right. So you just kind of watch it and you enjoy it, but then you leave and then you move on to other things. It's, yeah. There's nothing memorable to you it. You went in yeah. with a lot of expectations to Prometheus. Now, one that I didn't go into with as many expectations, it kind of, I was pleasantly surprised with Spider-Man, because I didn't know how it was going to be. I wasn't even that excited about it. I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, we'll go see this new Spider-Man movie. But once I was in there, I just got so sucked into that world. I was yeah. really, really happy with the amazing Yeah, I, enjoy, I yeah. enjoyed it. It's, yeah. one, it's one of those things where, also, then you start finding out, you start watching the trailer, and you're like, there were elements that they were going to have in that movie about his parents that were clearly cut. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, once you start realizing that, you start being like, oh, Oh, that kind of pulls it back for me. But then you're like, no, just enjoy the movie for what it was, and yeah. I still like yeah. it. Yeah, a lot. I agree. And here's here's a movie. Well, actually, you know what? And it's, you, you mentioned we mentioned really Scott before, and it's something we wanted to talk about real quick. Um, I think it would be it wouldn't be fair if we didn't mention you know Tony Scott. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know what a great talent he was, and oh, as far as all this, unbelievable and, film, yeah. and we really lost someone who had a such a hold on on film even and, recently because like yeah. top gun is, is fantastic one of my favorite movies ever but the, like recently like, the, the taking a pelham one two three was a much better such movie than it should yeah. have been yeah. yeah and uh and unstoppable was fantastic yeah well, not only that yeah. his hand in so many amazing television shows yeah too. yeah you know, i mean just um um a phenomenal person and you know it just goes to show that you can never 
you can never know what's going on in someone's life and you can never judge anyone. Right. Yeah. And it's just, it's really sad. It's tragic. It really is. And the thing, it's just like all this stuff like that was going on and we, we had heard about it and we just, you know, we, I think that maybe if, if it's not next week or the following, we're going to do a full, in honor of him, just like a full podcast on, uh, on he's, his, he, on he's his, got the body of work to yeah, talk on, so on his just, movies. I implore you, if you don't know, you need to go to imdb.com and look him up yeah. and you will just go through that filmography with like your jaw. It's crazy. You know, true. Beverly Hills Cop 2. That's still that's my favorite one Did of the. Did he do Beverly Hills Cop 2? Yeah. Yeah, wow. Beverly Hills Cop 2. Wow, that's fine. Yeah. The he directed fa- it. Yeah, yeah. And the action's fantastic, so, and, the, and he so he can he could he he could do anything yeah. in film and make you yeah. and make you believe it. He was just such a great talent, and uh, I, f- you know, heart goes out to his family. So just wanted to mention that quick. Back to the summer thing, and uh, something that should not follow Tony Scott. Yeah, back is, to irrelevant things. Is, uh, very irrelevant is Dark Shadows. Um, everyone forgot oh, about that. Yeah, movie. I, I was like, Dark Shadows, Dark Shadows. Right. Yeah. I was like, oh, what? Yeah. What was that again? Yes. Johnny Depp. Yeah, and and everyone forgot about that. And when mm-hmm. it was announced, they're like, Oh, Tim Burton, Johnny Depp again. This is gonna be real cool. And then, I was never excited. No, well, some, it's also, but it's also got that goth like vampire tone that you just know Tim yeah. Burton can knock out of the park. Uh, yeah, I haven't. I, I I just got excited. We were just talking about this earlier that Danny Elfman's never let us down. But Tim yeah. Burton. Yeah, 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 yeah. There have yeah, been yeah, a few yeah. times and, lately. And I'll say Johnny Depp. I thought was fantastic in the movie. He but was the fun. Movie, so. The story Story. You're just watching. You're like, what are we doing yeah, my here? Big, my guys? biggest problem with that thing was that you you could have done a, a movie to where you're learning about all these different kooky characters and the back and forth. And it was all about Johnny Depp and how insane he was. And, and it's like it's like bring it down a little bit because yeah, you can right. learn more yeah. about the relationships there. I think you could have had that, but they worked together so much. He's like, yeah, Johnny, just do whatever you do want. Whatever right. you want. I'll just make it look wacky. Yeah, yeah. And, you know. yeah. It's one of those things where that's why I like movies like Public Enemies because Johnny Depp is a really good actor, but at yeah. this point he always plays cartoons, yeah, and so that. I'm. Not impressed yeah. with that anymore. Public Enemies was such a phenomenal movie, right. and he was so good in it. Right, and and when he tones, when he plays these real characters, he's got to stop going so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you and know, it's it's I don't know. It's like Mick Jagger when he used to just like sleep with every girl that he could. Yeah. It's like I'll, I'll bang a couple dudes. Yeah, you know, so <laughs> yeah. at this point, that's where Johnny Depp. He's like, I've done that. Just I'll play some guy with purple hair just to do it. Right. right. So, so I, I don't know. He All right, guys. Was pretty phenomenal in Alice in Wonderland, though. He was. I mean, yeah, anything he's in, he's good, and he's he commits one hundred percent. It's just like I want to see him just do normal stuff, uh, like mm-hmm. like the Dillinger. All right, let's take a phone call here. We're talking summer movies. I hate this stupid thing. All right, <laughs> all right. You are in Schmoville. Who do we got? Hey, this is Garth, and I just wanted to uh, talk all about right. uh, how last year we had maybe ten blockbusters in the month of May, and this year we were severely disappointed with anything but the Avengers. That's true, and it's funny, and the Avengers probably made more than all those movies last year. <laughs> gonna, that's, that's what I was going to say, yeah. and that's the reason, is that all those movies failed, so it's yeah. kind of like, you know, how do you how do studios then release... They lose their confidence. It goes back and forth, you know? Next well, summer, there's going to be a lot more movies mm-hmm. because this summer was such a big summer. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was, And and but the thing is, it's too, you're going to see more superhero movies and stuff like that, and Marvel is not going to stop, which is fine with us, obviously, too, but it's just like, I don't want that to be the only thing because then, they're like, then there's just reboots of old TV yeah. shows like the one we were just right. talking about and it's like there's no they they they're, they get scared to take chances yeah. you know what i mean yeah so. and uh, it, I, it's not that there were a lot of bad movies this summer it's just everything was gray um, nothing was great there were a couple of greats oh, well, no, i'm not saying there were no, no bad I know. movies i know but i want to see where this falls in that scale for you and that's battleship Oh my god, I saw Battleship. Oh, did you? Okay. All right, no, that movie was not good. Okay. Are you so. kidding? I loved it. Oh. No. I loved every single Stop. second of Battleship. But you can't I, say the acting was good in that movie. I, I, I'm, no. I, 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 <laughs> She's like, in that Expendables way. Yeah. Well, I, mean, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't even think that the, the acting influenced the movie at all, to no. be honest. I think what was so great about it was that when they were actually doing the jumping of the ships, I was like, oh my god, this is the game. Yeah. And it made me so happy. Because that was like my childhood. I loved Battleship. I liked a Every lot of second, elements. I would watch it again. Of Battleship, but watching it like because I, I I'm a big Independence Day fan, and that movie starts off you're like this has like an Independence Day vibe where it's going to be fun and there's going to be aliens, but mm-hmm. the action just got so repetitive after a while. And when you are showing me repetitive, boring action, and Liam Neeson's outside that bubble, he yeah. can't get in right. there. Liam Neeson just sitting on a boat know, like, oh well, I hope there. they're going to win. Yeah, Taylor, he need, he need, he's going to need a hit to come back. From he, I think well, he's got it. I think Taylor Kitchen can be. A star, I, see, man. Yeah, I, really I, I, I don't. I think, I think he's like Sam Worthington. Yeah. I, yeah, me too. I'm with well, you. Yeah, he's. Because I also think that he was great in John Carter. It just you yeah, just made I like it, John you Carter. Just, you now have a franchise of movies that nobody knows what the fuck mm. John Carter is. Well, yeah, yeah, no, nobody. but that. But I don't think that was the problem with that movie though. They, the, the director of John Carter, and we should just we'll talk about John Carter now. Anyway, is the fact that that movie, it was, was John Carter. John Carter wasn't Summer though. 
Was it? It, it was like March. Uh, it was March. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but anyway, but John Carter, the problem with that is that they, they just went into this kind of, they didn't know if it wanted to be a Disney movie. They didn't know if it wanted to be a cool, cool sci-fi kind of, with, right. you know, and it just, it was all over the map. There were so many problems with it. It got silly sometimes. It was serious sometimes. The, it yeah. just—it could have been better. I didn't hate the film. I thought it was I didn't fine. Hate it either. But I just—I'm not with the Taylor Kitsch. Hey, every time I got to talk like Clint Eastwood and Batman, you know. I'm, <laughs> eh. So anyway, um, all right. So that was so Battleship was it was what it was. I did not see the Dictator. <laughs> I um, enjoyed that one. I, it. It I laughed my ass off in that movie. Did you like? I, I, really I, did. I can't judge on it, so I didn't see. It. But Mark, you thought it, it was, was funny. okay. It was, it was funny, but it just—it it didn't really do it for me like Ted did. Okay. I think Ted is by oh, far. Yeah. I, I think Ted is probably the best comedy. Well, that's a summer. great question. We got a Twitter question from um, Jack Shroud at Cinema Jack, and he asked, "What is your favorite comedy of the summer?" There's um, there's the Dictator, there's Ted, there's the Campaign, there's the Watch, and t- uh, well, Twenty One Jump Street was a little earlier, and Stooges. Yeah, um, um, Stooges was earlier too. Yeah, it was but earlier. I think that. Yeah. I, I think the campaign had had a really funny parts. The watch made me laugh more than I thought it would. But Ted, I mean, I'm yeah. a huge Family Guy. Um, yeah. I think Ted's got to be the best one too because it just it, it didn't just play on the gimmick. Yeah, right. um, it, it had some heart to it. It had heart. Yeah. We were talking about this last time. Yeah. That I cried twice in that Did movie. You? Which part? He died. Oh, and then he came back. spoiler alert! Oh yeah, really? Spo- Sorry, super spoiler alert! Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ted is yeah. now yeah. ruined. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not good at yeah. this whole. Spoiler That's what you thing. get for our breaks. Sorry, I'm talking to our producer. No, I think that it was fantastic. I think that there are. What what I loved about it was they treated Ted as if he was an actual person, right? And yeah, um, I loved how they didn't have to explain it all the time. Everyone right. just saw, oh, it's Ted. Like, yeah, yeah I loved like, that. Just, yeah. And they only took five minutes to set up the story, and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden they were adults, and it mm-hmm. got funny mm-hmm. because he would say he was saying things that you would never be allowed to say if it was an actual right. person. Yeah. I cried and peed my pants when the teddy bear said, yeah, whatever, thanks for 9-11. I was like, yeah. oh, <laughs> right. my God, that was so inappropriate. But, he just, but he's a teddy, teddy bear, bear that said it. Well, let's right. also point yeah. this out. Sockoff was like a bottle deep in vodka by that point. So. <laughs> <laughs> she's crying. True. She gets a little emotional when she's drunk, apparently. That's, That's right. It's true. It's true. I was uh, all hopped up on Mountain Dew. Yep. All right, guys. We're talking <laughs> summer movies. We're going to the calls. Um, a lot of fun today. So, okay. we You are in Schmoville. Who do we got? Hey, uh, it's Fletcher. Hey, man, what's up? Hey, um, I just wanted to say that um, the Avengers was. I'm on Mark's side. I really loved it. Thank you, Hunter. And I'm just more of a fanboy of that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And I, but I love the Dark Knight. But an action movie that I really appreciated was The Raid. And I just, um, I just really liked how it was shot and. Uh, I just liked it from start to finish. Great, man. Thank you. You know, the funny is, I don't think anybody in this room has seen the No, rant. and everyone has heard a hundred times I that know. they should. I was going to watch it last night, too. Really? Right? See, it's that, on, yeah. yeah. Is that, it on Netflix? Because yeah. I saw... It's on Netflix. It's on DVR. Oh, oh really? Netflix. Sorry. Oh, the in demand? Yeah. Oh, demand. great. Okay, I want to see that. Is that like a VHS thing? You is put in a like a, what do you, do you have to pay for that? <laughs> yeah, that's how we watch <laughs> Goon. That's how we watch Goon. Yeah, right, cool. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, everybody's that, telling me about this raid thing, man. You know, is it? It's 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 the best action movie. Yeah, it's Die Hard and all yeah. this stuff. And, so. and apparently, the guy who played uh, John Claude Van Damme's second in the event in the uh, Expendables, yeah. was like one of the main guys in this. Mm-hmm. And that guy kicked ass in that movie. So good. I want to. I actually really want to see that because it's one of those things that everyone comments, like, "Hey, you guys see this?" And everyone that has commented on it talks about how awesome this movie is. Yeah, my friend and I were talking about that. We're like, I have never heard someone. Watch the movie and say, "No, it wasn't that great." Overhyped. Every human being yeah. is saying that yeah. it's the greatest ever. So I'm watching it tonight. Yeah, I I check it out it. and let us know what you think. Is you're probably going to be the first one to get to it because now it's one of those things where it has so much hype now. Now yeah, it's you want to be as great as yeah. the Avengers. I know. So I like, oh, I All right. Know. Now this is one. This is this is this movie. How much do we have, Jeff? Yeah. Five minutes. Okay, we can get into Let's this. Let's get one. into Piranha Three. No, 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 no. no. That's, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that shit pile in a second. But um, we, no, this is a movie that I know. Jeremy and I are on the same page, and Mark is just on another planet on this. You movie. know, you do this a lot, by the way. No, this is when true. When Jeremy Johns comes to town, you always like, yeah, me and Jeremy are always on the same page. Mark's <laughs> like, a fucking idiot. Well, I, said, said, I, I, I never said you're an idiot. I never said you're. I never said you're an idiot. I just said. I don't know. I don't know if I could ever agree with you, Jeremy. Good. So now I'm on Katie's side too. But look, no. What I'm saying is a lot of you and what makes our our show because we don't always agree with one another. I just hadn't had a good scrap with you all weekend, so I figured you haven't. Talking about your parking, losing your I don't know what level I parked in. I parked on two, you parked on 12. Fuck face. We were in a different My parking Jeep garage. is fantastic because you just hit a button twice and it starts, so if you can't find your car, it just drives around looking for you. We're looking for awesome. Christian's forerunner from 1981. That's true. All right, let's talk about Men in Black 3. 
<laughs> Ellis is on another planet when when it comes to this yeah, movie. He wishes planet that, Earth. Yeah, he oh wishes that we could use God. that that thing to erase his memory of it. You, this yeah. is one of your worst of the year, right? It really, really bugged me. It it just I I thought it was just two guys showing up, just going through the motions. It's like Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones had no chemistry whatsoever, and there's the most annoying alien I've ever seen. It was this guy makes Alf look like oh yeah I could I could live with Alf. You know, for a semester before I'd spend one afternoon with this damn you, idiot. You can't mention Alpha not do the impression. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to yeah, say. Hey, everybody! <laughs> Men in Black 3 sucked! <laughs> <laughs> I only do one impression. I'm so glad I didn't get that role because then he'd be telling me I, know. I was well, a classless well, whore that was in uh, Men in Black 3. Well, Men Katie's in, a classless whore, <laughs> Willie! Well, Men in Black 3, to me, I liked it. I thought it was a lot better than the second one. It was fine. It was like three out of five. It was what it was. Yeah. I liked the time travel last week. Once, once he went back in time, that's when, to me, the story got better. The first half yeah. was a little Oh, yeah. Was the, the first Rowling 15, 20 minutes, you're like, uh, well, that's the thing. You said, you said that uh, Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones had no chemistry. Yeah. Tommy Lee Jones was in it for like six and a half minutes. Yeah. But it still bugs you when all these guys come back and it's like no. If you're not gonna put your your put your heart into this, then then don't charge me money to see it. I don't yeah. think Tommy Lee Jones knew he was being filmed the entire time. Yeah, it's probably. <laughs> I, was, I think that you were just like, I'm gonna film he's this about, guy. He's thinking about uh, hooking up with Meryl Streep in a movie theater. That <laughs> Hope Springs movie. That was the best porn I saw all year. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see Hope Springs. Is it good? All they do is make out and like try to give each other blowjobs. The whole it's weird. <laughs> it's off put. Yeah, I actually I heard a lot of people. Um, Really like that movie. I know. Hope I Springs. hear I that missed it's it. going to be really great. I mean, he 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 thought it was fine. It's funny, in, yeah. It was just he just weirded out by it. You know what's weird is that my mom went to go see it a couple nights ago, and I'm I'm afraid to call her to talk about it because, because I don't want to. She's going to want to talk. Just, Your father and I did that once. Yeah, time. So yeah, right. Mark, we need to talk yeah. about the birds and the bees. Mom, yeah. I get it. Well, yeah. Mom, I've already dipped my stick. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a while. Um, it has been a while. while. Yeah. Um, all right, so we we are talking summer movies. Guys, are recapping it with Jeremy Johns, Katie Sackoff, and uh, of course Mark and myself. Tweet us. You guys can call in. We're going to take a little bit of a break here, and when we come back, we'll talk about the second half of the movies. And it's been a lot of fun. This is awesome. Look, I really like. This the, is how we do it. I just like the eight to ten thing. I think it works a lot. Yeah, yeah, Seventy-five thousand Oh, yeah. she's fun. She's been. <laughs> Yeah, She's man. been talking about this for all well, the past hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it, it took me an hour to go up 20. All right, cool. We're right back, guys. All right. Look at that. A little Stones action. Love it. All right, guys. We're back. It's uh, We're back in Schmoville here uh, with us, obviously, and Katie Sackoff, our co-host, and Jeremy Johns. Jeremy, what's up? Jeremy, before we get... <laughs> boo, you booing, Katie? I did nothing to you but get you coffee. Yeah. Don't give me coffee. Oh, shit. That's right. You already had coffee. <laughs> yeah. All right. right. Well, yeah, fuck you. You know what? And this now is... I'm out. Uh, this is what happened. Trying to get on it. Yeah. When you get to seventy-five thousand Twitter followers, you just become a totally class diva. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, diva. Yeah, diva. Um, right, Jeremy, before we get into this, so uh, real quick, how are you enjoying your time in L.A., my friend? Uh, L.A. Every time I come here, I'm always like, you know what? I'm just gonna stay. I'm mm -hmm. just gonna not move back and stay. Or if I go back home, I'm gonna move down here. And then it's like a meter thing. Yeah. You get home, and then you're like, all right, your content meter starts going up. Right. And you're like, oh, I guess I can stick around this fucking green state. It's like a power bar in Street Fighter 2. Like, right. I keep like, wearing yeah. you down. Yeah, and then... right. And then, then you come back, and, I, and you're I, sitting I next to Katie Sackhoff. You're like, ah, maybe I should go to LA. Yeah, see, you know what's funny? Is, yeah, you're like, all right, this fanboy piece of shit is just going to like lick my ear the entire time. I know it. And look at that, right? I'm 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 composed. I, right. I'm telling these guys. I'm like, I don't fanboy out, you freaks. Yeah, yeah, well, what, yeah, when she leaves, she smelled so good. Oh, that's exactly what's going to happen. But while right. I'm here... Yeah. Somebody just told me I ruined Ted for them. You ruined? Uh, oh. Well, you know what? Yeah, well, I also died about If you're going to yeah. Ted to <laughs> see... <laughs> Wait a minute, you did? did you really she just spoiled. Why did she spoil it? Right bring me. Were not she yeah. supposed to bring me to the DVDs? Wait, the best part I, I about did. that. Wait, the best part about that was that she said that, and then you're like, you did. And Jeff gives this look like, come on, did you really? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff is our, our producer, is a hardcore Battlestar Galactica fan, so he knows. Um, okay, uh, yeah, but Jeremy, um, it's it's you know obviously great to have you here. If you do if you do not know Jeremy, YouTube.com slash Jeremy Johns J A H N S. I spell it funky. Nice. That's right. That's just what I gotta do. Uh, check us out YouTube.com slash schmoes no and follow Katie at Katie Sackoff and oh, make sure she that got, she gets 75,000 yeah she already hit 75,000 okay, alright fine um, <laughs> alright let's in, yeah, the, in the Eliza Dushku world it means nothing well, Eliza Dushku wants nothing to do with this podcast we've asked her already um, yeah, right. we both made our attempt yeah she's like yeah. really she's but, yeah. sweet I'll ask but to answer right. your question it's always a blast when I come here it is okay here we go guys um, all right, so back into the summer movies we ended with Men in Black 3. Don't worry, Mark. We're done with that one. Um, let's get to some other movies that came out. And this we, we talked about 
the scandal around it last week. Ooh. Snow White and the Huntsman. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. At the time when it came out, there was no scandal. Around, well, there, there was a scandal going on. We just didn't know about it. Um, and this movie was another one that the trailer, when it was cut, looked so like, oh, this is going to be epic. This is going to be great. And the difference, like oh, Anne Hathaway we were worried about. People were worried about Kristen Stewart. This worry seemed to come true a little more because she's frowning and sulking the whole time. Better than she's normal. Not, she's, better, she's better than normal. Kristen Stewart came to play in the first half of this movie, but then it was, again, yeah, it, she was, did. it was like it was like a golfer that just goes back to his old swing because he just kind of like like she went back to the frowning in the second half of the movie. Yeah. And then she has to give that again. She has to give this pep talk to all these like warriors that are going into battle. <laughs> it's just not, yeah. She just yeah. To me, it was like. I want to see, you know, what's his name? Um, Hemsworth, the one that you no, love. <laughs> Cro- sorry. I want to see Russell Crowe give, give that speech. Oh, right. Like, motivate the... the right. I don't want to see... Or Hemsworth. Let Hemsworth do it. Let Hemsworth do it. Yeah. Right. Hemsworth do it. Yeah. Right. Like, she pushes her aside and yeah, then starts giving four. that speech. It's, it's like, it would have been, reali- been more realistic if she gave it. And instead of everyone going, yeah, they went, eh. You know, like I suppose we'll die yeah, for right. this shit. There should be a scene yeah. in the in the DVD extras where it's like Hemsworth talking. All the guys like, look, guys, she's gonna give you a speech. Yeah. Please act like you're excited. Do me a solid. I'm trying to bang this chick. But that's the thing. That's that's makes much so much more sense now because they were flirting the whole time, and then he gives. He's like, oh baby, you did such a good job. You did so good, sweetheart. You did so good. He didn't care how he she didn't did. Care yeah. how she did. So that's he, what happens when you mix that those two worlds. Yeah. You end up being not, uh, nice and lenient on people who suck. Yeah, it's the truth, I, and that, it makes so much I'm more serious. sense. No, that's you're right. My problem. You're right. <laughs> um, all right, so then you know, let's talk about some animation. You know, some animation that okay. came out. You had Madagascar three, which was one of the I better. I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, amazing. Okay, yeah, good. okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, she had an um. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Where yeah. are we going? What with were you drinking when you were in that theater? <laughs> there you go. All right, we so know what Mama's juice is. The the you got to make sure that you see an animation with. Uh, exactly. Yeah, sure. right. yeah. you're gonna leave going. Oh, what'd you see? Who cares? <laughs> no so, idea. I believe there actually Blood was Cinnabon. a talking lion. <laughs> um, Madagascar Three was just it was fun and it was one yeah. of those movies that it continued. The it actually got better. Yeah. As where the opposite was of Ice Age Four, yeah. Ooh, which was yeah. a fart box yeah. on wheels. Oh, that, oh. Was, that, that was that was appalling to sit in that theater. Oh, but, yeah, uh, that Madagascar bad. Three was really good. Neither none of the animations this year were as good because we mentioned we were trying to think of like what the best one of the year was I think for me it's still like the Lorax or something that came out before <laughs> right the summer. Before summer, so we didn't yeah. get that great animated movie even the Pirates movie the yeah. Pirates movie was yeah. great too. Yeah. Yeah. What Pirates movie? It was that Pirates of the Booty movie, whatever it was. They're like, like, like beans or something. It was something. like Pirates. the Wallace and. Like, Wallace and yeah. Gromit. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. I, that, that one slipped right under my radar. It's, it's, yeah. It was actually pretty it, fun. I imagine yeah. it, it would be. Yeah. It, yeah. Uh, the thing about the animations also is I, I, you had Brian Cranston, who was the voice of the tiger in Madagascar 3. He's, he's in and everything. he's one of the best actors in this modern day. Yeah. I mean, TV, film, whatever. But then you had Peter Dinklage. In oh, and, uh, yeah. Ice Age yeah. Four, yeah. and, he was, and he's brilliant. a great actor. But he wasn't. Good but he in that was. Not, that was yeah. not the role for him. Yeah, it's, no. it's, it's, when you hear his voice, you're like, I love Dinklage. I'm glad he's getting work, but that's not the it voice for and, that guy. And the monkey was just damn annoying. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, so there's really, and that's that. I think that's been the constant theme. Oh, and brave, disappointed. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. that's what I was gonna me, say. So that, no, I mean, me and as I well. Love that actress too. You know what it was though, Katie, right. with that with that trailer. The fact is, when you and you've seen the trailers, obviously, yeah. right? So when those trailers came in, you saw a movie that you thought, oh wow, this might be like an actual. The, you have the first female lead. She's going to be like a badass, but maybe right. she maybe she's got to you know rule the clans or whatever she does. She's got to find this responsibility, yeah. and it turns into like a classic, just like Disney story, yeah. which is fine if I know I'm going into that. Right. But if you like, I thought she was gonna like shoot people. Right when yeah. you when you sell me You're on coming of age, tale. yeah, she's yeah. gonna change her fate. Into a right, that's bold. Right, it's not, and 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 when you and I know that it's based she on the book. She just get married. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. changing my fate. Yeah. Changing my fate. But that's sandwiches. Fun. But it's <laughs> but that's really kind of what it was, and it was just. It, it, the tale itself, if you knew what it was going into, it, you would say, okay, that was cute, it's fine, I didn't mind it, but I didn't know that was it, and it, and it was disappointing. Well, they fired their director halfway through. Oh, right? makes perfect yeah. sense. Oh, okay, um, yeah. It was a woman, uh, female director, actually, and um, they actually fired her. Replaced they had a okay. parting of ways halfway through oh, the movie. Right. So. They, there you go, yeah, because but, halfway but, into that movie, I'm like, this is going to be a great story. This redhead's going to find out she's a lesbian, and she's going to take over the town, and everybody's going <laughs> right. to celebrate. No, no, mom's turning it into a bear. Right. Yeah, no, they, they, they fired her halfway through, and she was actually really disappointed about mm, it. Yeah. yeah. Alright, all right, Schmoville, let's take a m- couple more calls from you guys talking summer movies. Alright, you're in Schmoville. Who do we got? Hi, this is Dom. Big fan of the show, by the way. Thank you very much, man. What's up? Hello? Um, Hola? Um, lost Don. Are you still there? Hi. Yeah, what's up? Hey, man, what's up? What do you got? 
Um, big fan of the show. What's the one shot in the whole movie summer that you were just like, wow, that's why I love coming to the movies? I mean, for me, it was, I'm not really explaining anything here. It's in every preview. It's in the dark night when you see the cops just storm. Yeah. Uh, this is why I love coming to the movie. Uh, Jeremy, do you have an answer to that question? I do. Thank uh, you very much, man. For me, it was that scene in The Avengers, actually, where it's mm -hmm. going to all of them, and they're, and they're doing something. Like, yeah. Hulk is beating the shit out of things, then it goes up to Hawkeye, and he's shooting his bow and arrow, and then it goes over to Iron Man, and he's doing something. I was like, all right, well. It goes to Scarlett Johansson, she's standing there. Yeah, she's just with her guns and her titties hanging out, and she's <laughs> like, well, I'm relevant-ish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she was actually, but she's actually, that was the thing, that trailer, though, too, f uh, when that moment happened, that was, again, using the same thing. I'm like, oh, Scarlett Johansson's just going to be mm -hmm. looking around, flashing her titties. But she actually actually was all right in that movie. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Were you past, uh, did you audition for that role too? Uh, no. I'm no, well, she already had it. to have gotten in the room. Well, she that. already had the role from, you know, from Iron Man 3. Yeah. Yeah, right. Black Widow, yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. One for me when I did, you're... I did want, yeah. I, right. That's a great question because you're in the theater and you're like, man, that scene just blew me away. Like, it's really cool. That doesn't happen that often to mm -hmm. me, but when it does, I get really, really pumped and I like the rest of the movie usually. And this happened when, uh, in early August, I liked the movie a lot more than most people did. What's that? Am I boring you, Sackoff? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> happens to me every no, week. No, I, I ran out of coffee. Just this, this CW sitting over here just yawning. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's how we announce her from now on. And joining us... Uh, Katie, CW, CW yeah. Sago. Uh, we're all going to get sued by the CW. By the way. Perfect. Um, the scene in uh, in Total Recall when Colin Farrell, like he he like something goes wrong with the recall stuff, yeah. and he remembers all this stuff, and he just beats the crap out of everybody. The camera's doing a three sixty, yeah. and then he that was that was one of the coolest moments of the summer to me. Uh, mine was when everybody booed Russell. Uh, what's his name? Russell. Oh, shit. Russell Brand. Russell Brand. The Katy Brand Perry, Katy movie. Perry movie. It would have been a lot <laughs> funnier if I remembered his name. Uh, but no, I mean for me, I think that um, I haven't. That was the most. I heard in a crowd all summer. We yeah. went to go see the Katy Perry, the premiere, and, and the as soon as you see Russell Brand the first time, just eh, just the hissing. The, it wasn't even a boo. Yeah, it was, it was just whatever teenage they knew girls, shit was going whatever down. their yeah. sonar is, when they summon their friends to all hate something, that's what it was. For me, it was, it was again, Dark Knight Rises, just uh, w with Bane, when uh, on that plane, the thing I've already, I already saw, but mm -hmm. just when that plane drops in the beginning of that, of that you know, the dark. That was rises, cool. That was holy cool. shit. That, I mean, it just shows you the epicness that you're about to go through for like almost three hours. And I thought Tom Hardy was a f just incredible villain. And I think that can bring us into what yeah, you really wanted to talk about as far Good as question. Yeah. Who were your favorite villains and heroes of the summer thus far? All right, my favorite villain. Uh, I I don't want to steal Johnson's thunder because he came up with this. We were talking about it during the break. Your favorite villain. Uh, my favorite villain of yeah. the summer. Yeah. Uh, it'll probably surprise people, but it's actually Loki from the Avengers. Okay. I love Hiddleston. I loved Loki. He just because Bane's menacing, but. Loki, man, that dude's just kind of funny, and he, yeah, he was funny too. And I really liked his, what, like, what happened to his character yeah. um, towards the end of that movie. But the other one that I'm shocked, I'm saying this, it feels really I know weird what you're to say, say. I know exactly that one of my favorite say. villains this summer know it. was a young man named Jean Claude Van Damme <laughs> in The Expendables too. He was he had so much fun in that role. It just it, he he blew me away. I was so happy to see Van Damme back on screen. It, and uh, you know what? I'm not even going to argue. You can have that. Because that's yeah. just great. Yeah, and was and really I was upset good. when he was cast as the villain. I'm like, no, he's a good guy. But he, then he gets to have fun and do a yeah. different thing. And that's the thing is that he looked like he had so much fun in that role. Mm -hmm. And I was like, he, he, I don't, again, if he knew he was being filmed, I, I'd be surprised. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, one of the things I was going to ask Jeff, our producer, um, is that Mark and I actually did, uh, you can find this on YouTube. You just type in uh, Schmoes No Expendables 2 ETC. We did a whole interview with the cast of uh, Expendables. We got Arnold, we got we got Statham, we got all these guys. And Jeff, I don't know if you can get on any of the clips from YouTube. Um, we like to play like because Arnold just kills it. Arnold kills it. I love Arnold. Yeah, oh, Terry Crews on the red Terry carpet. Cruz I've never seen good, a yeah. man work any room like Terry Crews did. Terry Crews yeah. is fantastic. Um, I am going to say that. Uh, Oh, you know what? That's that a buddy of mine, William Holman, just tweeted in about that Seven Psychopaths movie that we talked about yeah, with, um, yeah. with Colin Farrell. Also, that's coming out. That's in the fall movie preview. I think it looks interesting. But we touch up on all that. We're going to do a fall movie preview. I think uh, next week. Um, I I'm going to go ahead and say uh, best villain was Giovanni Ribisi and his little fat kid from Ted. <laughs> yeah, fantastic! Yeah, like you sure. were good villains. terrified. Yeah. Actually, you know what? That did scare the shit out of me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you were terrified. Yeah. The yeah. Bear. You were like, oh my god. Yeah. 
he's back and he's dancing to a Madonna. Oh my yeah, god. Oh my scene. god, he's dancing to Madonna really well. That was yeah. so that's the shit I don't funny. think you know, about, but that's a good <laughs> answer. Yeah. You know, you. for me, I, I don't want to say Bane because it's it's too obvious and I've been going Dark Knight. For me, I'm gonna go Benicio del Toro and the Savages. Mm, yeah. Uh, okay, the, yeah. The movie the movie itself was whatever it was fine, but um yeah, but he was just I like that Creep movie. City. It was fine. I it feel you. Yeah. He he totally he's, killed it and he no. owned that. And then at a point in the movie you're like, You're a fucking sick son of a bitch. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. yeah, I all right, good. Yeah. All good answers. You all yeah. have passed that test. <laughs> hey, us. Gold stars around. That's right. All right, so let's get uh, let's take another call from Schmoville and then we'll uh, we'll talk about a few more summer movies. Heroes too. Uh, uh, which one? Oh yeah, we're we'll talking about heroes. heroes. Yeah, we'll close out with heroes. All right, heroes. okay. Oh, not, not the TV show. Like, yeah, right. sorry, not like, the canceled ABC the show. Uh, hey guys, so who we got, man? Um, well, hopefully, uh, I think this is my be my third time calling in, but uh, I got a, a movie for you guys that I want to hear your discussion about. Okay. Uh, uh, this is I don't know if it's summer, but it's early this year. This is probably my. One of my favorite movies I've okay. ever seen now after seeing it, and that's The Cabin in the Woods. Oh, okay. oh yeah. thanks, man. Well, you know what? That uh, we'll I, definitely talk about it. You know, was April, it was so April. It, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was April. It led it summerish. Like, you know, it was, I was still 31. It's the foreplay of summer. Yeah. Yes, that's the re- that's exactly the reason why I would count it because it set you up for the summer and it gave you Thor right before the Avengers. Look, every every summer season needs that movie that you see and you're like, oh, now I'm ready to see a summer. You can't just open with the Avengers. You got to have you got to have a comic go up before the right. headliner. Yeah. You a fluffer. That's you gotta get fluffed, right? Nothing <laughs> <laughs> plus me like Chris Hemsworth in, in Cabin in the Woods. That, I, I love Cabin in the Woods to death. I'm a big horror movie guy, and, but it wasn't and even so much a horror. The, yeah. the, the, the yeah. twist that they put on it, knowing how much I love horror movies, and then that end scene with the elevator. That, by the way, the other question yeah. the, before, which is like, what, what was your favorite yeah. moment in the Their theater moments. this year? That scene in the elevator, the end when every nightmare okay. you've ever oh, yeah, had. Yeah, spoilers, man, spoilers. Yeah, 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 way to go. I like yeah. how you take off your headphones, yeah, 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 but his voice is Set, right there. Says, yeah. Says so, the girl yeah. who just ruined Ted ruined for everyone. Ted for, someone just called me a bitch for ruining Ted. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> At least they didn't call me a classless whore. Oh, they will. All <laughs> right. I gotta agree though. Cabin in the Woods is uh, yeah. it's it's one of the best. I'll, qu- I'll call it a quote horror movie, although it might be a bit more of a comedy. But in the past mm-hmm. twenty years, it's the best of that genre. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is a great tweet. Uh, at the Oscorp says the best villain was Rihanna and Bell. Yeah, that's because <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> she, she almost because she almost ruined the movie. She, I, yeah. I, I, I auditioned for that. Oh my gosh, she oh, you, was bad. Yeah. Um, they, they gave it to Rihanna instead, instead of you. Of me. Well, well, wow, Kat, they were drinking during the. Uh, yeah. We had a whole battle on that um, because Catherine Reitman like thought she was great in it too, and back and forth. But Rihanna was great in it. Yeah, remember she she like she enjoyed her. I mean, that, you know, she, I was entitled to her opinion, but we just had that whole back and forth. It didn't, bu- it didn't like like make the movie any worse than it already was for me because right. I don't because you know it's like oh they, look she's a singer and now she's going to be in a movie. It's, and it's so fine. ruined it for me. Like I think she even had fake nails on. Yeah, it was like are you are you kidding? That's I hate when they just put people in movies because yeah. they have a following. Like yeah. you know what they just well, put her Vanilla in there Ice was they... great in, in Ninja Turtles too, Secret of the Years, well, uh, and, uh, and the and Adam, Adam Sandler Adam movie. Sandler movie. <laughs> yeah, that's right. there um, yeah. They just need a girl who could take a punch. They got her. Our buddy Josh McCuga <laughs> tweets in. Oh, fuck my face. Are you <laughs> <laughs> that's what Jeremy's been waiting here. I got Katie to say fuck my face. Oh, I can't believe he just said that. Wow. That was not my podcast. I Right now, Jesus. All right, so, you can call me Jeremy. <laughs> oh my God. All right, here we go. Uh, Josh McCougar, our buddy, uh, tweets in: "You're talking villains, and you totally forgot the, about the HGH estrogen induced cougars in Magic Mike." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That movie so was good. actually good. It was, yeah, it was I fun. It. it was good. Josh McCougar will be on uh, next week talking that's about good. the fall that's movies good. with us, so uh, check him out as well. But uh, yeah, that movie was one again, like because I think chat, chatting chat. Chad, I used to call him Chatting Channing Tatum. He he's definitely he's a huge movie star now, and that was one of the he jumped because and Jeremy and I have talked about this as well. And once again, he agrees with me. You agree with me on this one. Twenty One Jump Street was the one where you said, "Okay, yeah." Yeah. Now beforehand, you as a woman probably just like, "Oh, I like watching him without his shirt off." No, you know, I actually watched Twenty One Jump Street because I grew up on the TV show and I loved. But I'm saying before you watched that movie, yeah, right, right. I like to see him dance around with his shirt off. And now, but after that movie, he was funny. 
you like him, and then you forget about G.I. Joe and actually want to see him in G.I. Joe 2. It took me a long time to get over G.I. Joe, but right. yeah, he was great in 21 Jump Street. He yeah. was hysterical, and he was fantastic. Yeah. I, I liked Magic Mike a lot. That was yeah. a really good movie. It yeah. changed my life. It, I'm sure <laughs> you, you really started dancing. Matthew McConaughey schlong? No, you see, you see that dude from the guy that was supposed to be your boyfriend on, uh, on True Blood. Yeah, the, oh, uh, Joe Maggiolino. Yeah, and that's and him, like yeah. a side shot. Like it's, it's a prop. Like it's like a shadow it's, dong. It's like a shadow dong. His dong? It's like a shadow it's dong. One of those, it's one of those scenes when you see that and you're like, I hope that's not real. Seriously, right. I, I actually, the, the main reason I regret turning down True Blood, not to mention that I want to work with Alan Ball, he's amazing, mm-hmm. but is because I would have been able to make out with Joe. Are yeah. you kidding? Yeah. yeah, you know what? I, that's one of the things I said in my video, my God review of Magic me. Mike. I was like, I ain't gay, but if I was, I would hit that. I yeah. would hit, I, listen, well, I would hit that if I well, I'm gonna try. was married with five kids. <laughs> 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 Kristen Stewart, ladies and gentlemen. Now Kristen she is a classy whore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the, the funny thing, our buddy Josh McCuga is friends with him. We're going to try to get him on the show with you, so you got to try to contain yourself. Hey. Yeah. No, we work out at the same gym. It's fine. Oh, all right. Um, all right, so now we talked about villains. Let's talk about heroes. Mm-hmm. Who are your favorite heroes of the summer? And if we have time afterwards, we'll try to play the game. Um, if we have time. Game. Yeah, it's... It's probably it's probably got to be something for the Avengers for me uh, because it was just this, this collection of all these great heroes. I I want to say Batman, but the movie just didn't do it for me. Like I know, I know, I know. Did. And uh, so I Jason I Bourne. I mean, not Jason Bourne. Was it was Aaron say. Cross? Yeah. Is Aaron Cross the guy? Is, is that the new Renner. Bourne guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, love so. I we, forgot. We were in the review and we're like, hey, it's the Bourne Legacy starring. Another uh, yeah, gentleman, another with guy, with not problems. that name. Yeah, Peter something. I have no <laughs> we idea don't even know who his yeah. name is. Yeah, um, but, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd probably just get, just be the boring guy and probably say like, you know, Iron Man. Okay, well, that's yeah. not boring. That's, that's, yeah, that's he, a great answer. answer. Yeah, it is. Uh, you as well? Uh, well, I I was thinking the whole time your monologue, I didn't hear a word you said because yeah. I was like Iron Man or Batman, Iron right, Man or right. Batman, Iron, yeah. Iron Man or Batman. I'm gonna go ahead and say Batman just because again the movie was in a direction I didn't expect, and that dude had to deal with some shit. Yeah. And anytime a hero can has to deal with some shit, mm-hmm. I'm on his side, and yeah. uh, Batman brought that for me. Katie's is Ted. <laughs> <laughs> Slash Gordon. No, yeah. no, no. It would be um um, and this is a spoiler. Uh-oh. Spoiler, close your ears for Uh-oh. two seconds. It would actually, if I was going to stick with the whole Ted theme, since it's one of the only major movies I've seen of the summer, I would say Mila Kunis, because she actually, you know, spoiler, she saved the movie. Really, oh, really she's not, that wasn't yeah. a spoiler. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Yeah, it was that good. Was good. Um, yeah. I would say that for me, I'm going to go... You're going to get shit I'm, for it. Oh, yeah. bitch. I'm going to go in the... I'm going to go with Prana 3DD and say David Hasselhoff. No, oh, kidding. he's so no, good. I'm going to oh go... God, I love the Hoff. Uh, not in this movie, you no. wouldn't. It, it, it was really sad. Really? It was re- even sadder than that video of him eating cheeseburgers off the floor. Um, <laughs> I that yeah, uh, he, I he plays off of it. That's how bad it is. They play oh, off. It's no. it's terrible. He's so it's that movie sucks a pile of donkey cock. All right, so um, now the it now, fucks your face. Yeah, it does. <laughs> is it the whole pile or individual? Well, how do, how do you deal with just, that? It's horrendous. It was an insult. That was the worst movie. That was. We'll talk. That maybe we'll close horrible. out with that. As I said in the review, wait, the biggest wait, waste. Wait, wait, hold on. Yeah, we got to hear I hear. I'm gonna go with the Avengers, but I'm gonna go with the Hulk. Nice. Because, uh, you know what? Yeah, I thought good. Ruffalo was great. Was so I, I was so skeptical about him. And Fo- yeah, following were. Edward Norton and then making your own. Now everybody wants to see a Hulk movie after everyone was done with the Hulk movie. You win. And you, you know, know what's yeah. sick? I have totally forgotten that Edward Norton was Bruce Banner. Right. This, he you know, was so good. The biggest thing that I had a problem yeah, yeah. with um, with the Avengers is when, in the trailer when they showed they showed Hulk, no, right, go for it. They show Hulk save Iron Man. You don't need that shot. It's a huge spoiler, and it's not like, oh, we got to put that in there, and no one will see the movie. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like that. Right. I hated that they put that in there because that was such a huge moment, and you knew it was coming. Yeah, it's one of those things I where I forgot it was coming. The movie sucked me in yeah, so much, see, I forgot it was. Yeah, coming. I was with him, and when it was all going down, like, all right, this again. is our last stand, and it's one of those things where you think about it, and you're like, well, I haven't seen that shot, and that's still going to happen, which yeah, means it's all yeah. going to work out. Yeah. And I hate that when yeah. that happens. Sorry, I'm taking pictures. Um, okay, so one more one more phone call here, uh, then we'll talk about the shittiest movie of the year. <coughs> hey, man, you're in Schmoville. Who do we got? Hey, it's Hunter again. Hey. Hey, um, I just wanted to say that uh, sure, there's a Batman for best hero. There's the Hulk. There's Iron Man. But really, the one I think I liked the most was probably Captain America. Because what he did with the Avengers is you got to watch him fitting in that world. And sometimes it was funny, sometimes it was serious. And I even hear there's, like, lots of deleted clips of, like, 
a lot more of him fitting into that environment, and mm -hmm. it was just real fun to see him do that. Great. Thanks, dude. Yeah, I mean, it seems like, you know, you, when you have that many heroes in a movie, yeah. it's hard not to pick from that pool. Yeah. I can't wait to it, nerd out and see, like, the Blu-ray or whatever yeah. when they oh, have yeah. all the yeah, oh, extra yeah. footage and stuff. And Captain America, it's hard to step out of a time machine, you know, uh, seven years later. Surprised you didn't pick Spider-Man. Chris is fantastic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for he sure. He really well, is as Captain America. He's so good, yeah. and he's just, he's a really good actor, and I don't think he gets the credit that he um, deserves a lot of the time. I agree with you. And and, you know, one of the things, too, that we didn't talk, we'll talk about real fast um, and then get into yeah, get a little bit of time. We'll talk about Spider-Man real quick, The Amazing Spider-Man. We yeah. did a full podcast on it, so if you want to hear, you know, the detailed stuff, you can look at the Toad Hop archives and find that. Um, but th I think everyone, some people go back and forth on this one. Mm -hmm. I happen to, I get, Mark, you liked it a little more than I did. Yeah. Um, I liked it. I, I love the, the new tone that they set, and I'm excited uh, for the second one. I, I, as soon as it's I was in the theater, I'm like, let's do another one. Let's, let, let's run this back yeah. right now. And I thought Garfield could is yeah. right up there with, with my favorite heroes yeah. because he was fantastic as Peter Parker. Yeah, Andrew Garfield, was a, he was a great Spider-Man. Yeah. And it's one, of, it's one of those things where people are like, oh, they're making a dark like Dark Knight Rises. It's not like the Dark Knight Rises. Spider-Man's his own guy. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't think it was trying to mimic no, a Nolanized all. world. I just thought it was a real world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. so I, I enjoyed it a Absolutely. lot. Absolutely. And you had, I know you had reservations had, about it. Yeah. I, you know, I actually really love Emma, too. I think that she's fantastic. And we didn't talk about her last I week. I know. I know. I think that she's amazing, <laughs> yeah. and, and she can't do any wrong in anything she's done. <laughs> I, I, she's just brilliant. Mm -hmm. Will you please watch that when it comes out on DVD? Because I'd love to talk yeah. to you about it when it comes out, because I, I really think you're going to enjoy that one. Yeah. Th there um, is there's one scene in Spider-Man I wish I had, had touched on this for my scene that I like is with that first uh, scene where he's with the car thief like don't don't dress up like a car thief and he's just berating this guy mm -hmm, yeah. and I loved it because he you can tell that he has pent up anger and he knows how to be like comedic yeah. and yep. so him and comedically bashing yep. this guy is anyone any other hero's version of just wailing on right. him until he's just yeah. broken that's and bloody that was so great and about Spider-Man yeah yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, Christian um, made that great point where he's like, that's what a comedian is. It's somebody who has a really dark past. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so let's let's get into, we said we like Spider-Man. What is the biggest shitbox of the summer? Piranha 3 Double D. Biggest waste of tits since the Amarillo <laughs> Hooters burned down. Tits Thank you. Movie, though, it's, it's so bad. It's bad tits, it, though. It's bad. It, it's even oh. bad tits. Yeah. It's like, it's yeah, yeah, stripper tits. tits. Yeah. Yeah. It's stripper tits. Oh, it's yeah. stripper tits. Stripper tits. tits. Like, 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 like coked out, like not like, Vegas quality Not Vegas stripper tits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like Amarillo or something. Yeah, yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So really, yeah. really I'm putting different. myself through college with yeah. these tits. Yeah, the 3 a.m. It's like Barney yeah. Buffett's Dine and Grill stripper. Like a city yeah. in Kansas no one's ever heard of. Here's, stripper here's stripper. Yeah. the stripper breakdown. You have your Def Leppard hot strippers. They're the ones that get to dance to pour some sugar on me. These were like Nickelback strippers, say, you know? <laughs> Nickelback, speaking of Nickelback, yeah. engaged to April, uh, April Levine. Avril Levine. Ah, interesting. I just read this on this little thing right here. All right. That, that, you know what they're Don't made for, Don't Thing. <laughs> um, uh, uh, yeah, don't do that. All right. So, um, yeah, for me, I guess Pir Piranha 3D. One of the reasons it sucks so bad is because the first one I didn't really love it when they rebooted the, the new one, but I got what they were trying to do. So it's like you know the rhythms were fine and it was silly and you either like that or you don't. I just happen not to be a fan of this. Just misses the mark. The the director John Gulliger has no concept of funny. And they thought because the Hoff was relevant to be funny like 10 years ago, yeah. thought that him running around being a douche, it, 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 that movie sucks to death. A Gary Busey scene in a movie like that shouldn't be not funny. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like that should be hysterical. Yeah. That should be the Gary funniest Busey thing. Can, I mean, he just has to get arrested and it's funny. Right. Yeah. yeah it's true. And they still managed to make uh, Gary Busey and Christopher yeah. Lloyd boring. I, this movie makes me sad. Wow. Uh, uh, what am I going to do now? What do you, so what about you? What's your shittiest it, movie of the year? You know, it's oh, summer. Yeah. Summer. Well, I'm going to have to go year because this summer, for some messed up reason, I was like, you know what? I don't have to. To see these shit movies. Like, right. I saw your review of Piranha Double D. I would have to go out of my way to see it. Like, yeah. I was like, oh, I'm going to have to drive 30 miles down the road to no watch need. Piranha. Yeah, I'm like, I I'm just not that proud. I don't want to berate myself. I don't think I've done anything so terrible this year that right. I have to do that. And so, uh, I, I, well, Ice Age, no? Yeah, I'd say, you know what? I'd say that. Of the summer, Ice Age 4 was the most dis I, disappointing would have to be Brave or Ice yeah. Age 4. Um, Brave is not bad enough to be that. Am I boring you? I was going to say, you are boring the shit out of her. Wow. All right, I'll, I'll keep it short and simple. <laughs>
This is this is <laughs> training Blondie. camp, guys. This is yeah. a two hour show. Okay? Yeah. Look, yeah. We're, we're hanging in there. We got it. This is when you kick it in. Yeah. Yeah. Ice H four final answer. This is it. This is the home stretch. And because it's the home stretch, we have a minute left here, and I want to do the wrap up. This is really cool. Very happy to be back on the Toad Hop Network. Uh, you can check us every Wednesday morning, eight to ten, calling in, tweeting us. Make sure that you tweet Katie. Help her get to a hundred thousand Twitter followers. She's going to help us get uh, Elijah Dushku, who hates our guts. Uh, oh, at Katie right Sackoff, uh, Jeremy Johns, at Jeremy Johns, YouTube.com, Jeremy Johns, Schmozno, YouTube.com, slash Schmozno. And that's about it. Next week, fall movie preview with our buddy Josh McCuga. We'll see you later. <laughs>